Hello, everyone. This is the Easy Allies podcast. I am Kyle Bossman, the Dark Prince of Nerd Media. Joining me this week, Brandon Jones. Hello. And that's it. Yeah. This is a very special episode. It is just me and Jones. There are only two of us. This is my final Easy Allies podcast. That was your final intro. You're never doing that again. Mm -mm. And to be honest with you, this is a weird episode of the Easy Allies podcast. You did a little bit of theater, Kyle. So do you do you ever recall like the last performance, you know, like you do the first scene, like the opening number and then you're like, ah, and then the curtain falls and then like two other people go out and they have their scene and you're like, great, I'm not on for 20 more minutes. And then like one person's like, that's the last time we're going to do that. And you're like, oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. We're never going to do that opening number again. I was. You don't have to. How do I have explain... a strong connection with it? It's just, yeah, um, you know, <laughs> it's like, how do I explain how into theater I was? It was it was basically not that right. It was like I always thought I was cooler than the plays I was in. Even Death of a Salesman. <laughs> you're cooler than Death of a Salesman. <laughs> Kyle, you're cool. <laughs> Kyle, if I went to if I'm 67, OK, uh-huh. yeah. and I'm in Vegas, right? You know, like with the kids and, you know, like just the one kid, probably just the one kid. But he's, you know, Milo's got kids now. And so we're like, oh, okay. And uh, I, I look, and I, oh, who's in town? And I see Grapes of Wrath. And Amanda's like, Grapes of Wrath, we could go see Grapes. Or not Grapes, uh, uh, sorry, Death of a Salesman. And I'm Is like, that how she talks? And I'm like, but yeah, it's like, well, that's how she will talk when we're in, in our late 60s. Sure. And I'm like, Bossman's at the Luxor. We got to go see Bossman. And you're like, oh, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely make the play over the two. I mean, we'll see what else, you know. Wait, so you would rather watch Death of a Salesman? Than me at the Luxor. No, I'd rather see you at the Luxor. That's the point I'm making. I'd oh, always okay. rather see Bossman over a lot of things. What if it's just me dancing? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have no any expectations. <laughs> Somebody like saw me in the crowd. They're like, "I used to work with this guy. What are we? What are we in for here?" I'm like, "I have, honestly I have no idea. I know. Yeah. He's been here for three years. I've never seen him here. I don't. I don't know what he did. Magic? I think. I'm not sure. That was one of my first uh, career goals was to be a magician. That is, uh, yeah, didn't Luke Arnold drop the bomb on us? He was like, oh, I used to do some magic. And like, can't you totally picture that? Yeah. Your card is gone. And you're like, I, it, you know, it wasn't. I saw what you did, but it, I mean, here's $20. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like I'm too clumsy to have really been able to pull that off. There are, cl- yeah, it, it's, it's like uh, Jackie Chan. It's why the man's such a genius. It's like, it's, it's really hard to make it look like he can't fight. You know, yeah. to make mm-hmm. it look like, oh, I'm just kind of stumbling through this, but I still have to hit just a couple inches away from you. Like every time it's like to look like that much of a buffoon, like Charlie Chaplin, like, he, you know, every step is is choreographed. Yeah. So so smooth. Yeah. Uh, so this week's podcast is uh, no video games talk. You should if you were looking forward to some video games news this week, you should not just watch next week's podcast, though. There's nothing like really. That happened this week anyway. Any corrections? Oh, we got corrections. I'm just li- I'm just great, giving people great. the rundown first of all. Um, I'm, I'm setting expectations first. Uh, would you? I mean, would you miss really? Like nothing. If there was a huge, if there was a big bomb that dropped, Jones and I would have handled that first before we'd like just talk to each other about nonsense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we are doing corrections. Uh, then I'm going to ask Jones some questions about this podcast going forward. Uh, then I'm going to give him some tips. Ooh. It's hard to say, but I think podcast halftime might come after that. Then Jones has some <laughs> questions for me, and then we're doing love and respect, and then we're ending this podcast. Sound good, whole, Jones? Yeah, I got a I got a list of questions for me. We have work to do. This is going to be work, basically. Oh, okay, but it's Great. funny. It's like you know, Kyle, you are the headline. You're the story. You've taken over the Easy Allies podcast. It finally happened. Yeah, after I don't... 200 or so episodes. That's you not are, how I envision this. You are the main thing we have to talk about, man. Would I envision this more as just making the audience feel comfortable with the transition? I don't think this is about me. M- Monday morning, we're all waking up in a post Kyle Bossman covering video games world. Mm-hmm. That's the yeah. truth. There's your headline. There's your timestamp. It's talking about the reality of that. And here's the thing. Like, here's the bummer. I talked to you know, I talked to some other people, and you know, for our community and everything. Everyone's like, "What are you going to do with Kyle leaving?" It's like there's not much we can do because we are in a pandemic, and the man can just shut off his computer. Like, I can't. You know, if we had the office, we could at least lock you in a room and do at least one thing. Like, haha, we forced Kyle to do something. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't have to force you to do any of this. I'm yeah. lucky to get you online right now. Yeah. And so it's like, what you know? I just got to play ball. It's time for corrections. Begin corrections music, please. <laughs> Okay, so Jones, the dual analog controller for the PlayStation 1 that we talked about last week. And the week before. And the week before that even. Uh, in Japan, it did have rumble. 
So then an international release called the Dual Shock a year later had rumble all across the globe. But for some reason, Japan got rumble like a year before everybody else. We, got, after, we got aftershocks. Um, uh, melanin is the pigment, pigment that protects organisms from the sun, not melatonin. That's for Ian. Got it. Yeah. Uh, these are the corrections that mattered most to me. Uh, Break for me is the name of a track from Amplitude. So we had a stream back at Game Trailers, Jones, where you were showing us Amplitude, and it was a four-player multiplayer. Yeah. And one of the tracks was named Break For Me, and I watched the stream, and you actually say, Break For Me. You say that first. But then by the end of the stream, someone says, Can you do Break For Me in the Christian Bale voice? And then that just took off. This... Just somebody in chat, though. We don't know who. This, uh... This I think is, it's Enhedrin, maybe? Wow, this is proof that, again, our community is just better, just better than us. They're just better at everything, just how they track down all this stuff, how they know when these episodes are. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, kudos to everybody looking that stuff up. Uh, the line from Goldeneye is, Finish Great. the job, James. Blow them all to hell. Nice. Finish the job, James. Blow them all to hell. Only later, yeah. uh, as the general begins the countdown, Sean Bean's character blurts out, For England, James, before he is shot. So Huber has to pick one or the other. You just can't mash them together anymore. Uh, and finally, this is just an interesting factoid. Seven of the songs that Kyle has sung for Or Wars are playable in Rock Band. And yeah. corrections music, please. What's the, what's the last? How many songs? I don't know. <laughs> just seven of them are. Seven there. of them. If you want to, if you want to sadly bring out Rock Band now mm -hmm. and and just be sad while you're playing all of Kyle's songs. Uh, Jones is hosting next week. I don't think One More Time is in there. I don't think oh, Daft well. Punk is in Rock Band, so it's got to be seven that other ones. That seems like Rock Band sauce. That seems you, like a... That's a lot of repetition. Yeah. It's not yeah. around the world, but it's still a lot of right, singing right. the same thing over and over. I don't know if I'd want to Rock Band that one. Um. Okay. No segment after that. So, Jonesy. Yeah. This is the portion where I ask you questions. Great. My first right. question for you is the okay. big one. Right. What is what is your vision for the Easy Allies podcast? You're becoming the new host of the Easy Allies podcast as of next week. Yes. What's your vision? Okay. First of all, I have to face facts with the podcast. I have to realize what's what's happening. Like I'm losing Kyle on the podcast, obviously not only as moderator, but just as like a general, as a personality, as a voice. Like, you know, I have to think of all of the things that are just, it's like if you have colors, you you know, colored pencils and you're trying to make something pretty and like the purple one's just gone. You know, it's yeah. like I can't, like there's lots of things I might want to do with purple. I just do not have it anymore. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of break this down. But one thing obviously that like, I first thought of when it was like, oh, maybe blood, could, maybe Brad. Could. Damn it, I'm hosting this podcast, aren't I? You know, like I really didn't think about it ever. Like the whole, I coasted the whole time you were hosting. I was just like, this is great. You mm -hmm. know, I'm just sitting in a jacuzzi of gaming news, and I get just get to kick back. And you're like, no, you're you actually have to dig. You got a mind for this stuff now. Uh, and it's like, okay, information aggregation, fine. Like you know, staying more on top of business stuff, trying to memorize as many executive names as I can, knowing what developers haven't produced, however many what games, and you know, however much anime I got to watch. However, I have to prepare for this. Like I can do it but i'm just not funny like you and so like that's like all the bits it's just like oh god like what are mm. some things that people just have come to expect so i'm gonna still give it my all in terms of the unpredictability and just the general sassy sense of humor that you always brought to the show it's just not gonna be there because you know what i'm obsessed with and i don't want to make this too much of it and that's one of my questions to you is how much of this podcast like was you was really like Cal Bossman's video game podcast. It's not just me thinking about easy allies. It's like, here's what I would think about video games. Cause like, I'm all about marketing, man. You think yeah. about the game announcements. Like I'm all about trailers. I'm all about games taking too long, broken promises, like all those things, you know, like you throw it to me whenever I want. It's like, like just talk about EA star Wars again. And I'm like, exactly, Oh, yeah. well, I never, you know, so like, will a rant be a part, you know, like, will I, you know, take the opportunity to just throw out some more pot shots or really just kind of like make a point when some companies I feel you take a hard stance sometimes you definitely mm -hmm. have we're like all four of us including Ian like all of us are like what are you talking about and you're like I you know League here's of Legends, the trick though League of Legends cancel shirts it's all I'm saying <laughs> just here's like, the trick though yeah <laughs> you have to present it as a topic though you have mm -hmm. to present it as something yeah. that you want the panel to challenge yeah. basically and so if you have hot takes you're like okay challenge me here tell so me I'm wrong so more business focused, 
That's and cool. Yeah. Again, there's, I could go on and on and on and on. I have a, two whole pages of, of stuff that I want to get through tonight Wow. Uh, to talk about, like, really what the future of the podcast is. But uh, I think one of the things that I also have struggled with is I was like, well, I don't want to change anything. You know, like, there is some stuff that I am going to change. Um but there's a lot, obviously, that works. There's a lot that people love, like, but I do kind of want to make it. Amanda keeps bringing up Daily Show, and it's just like, ugh. Because, like, I think no matter what, Daily Show has less viewers. And I think no matter what, people like it less. Just if you were just about Oh, so when like, it transitioned <laughs> to Trevor Noah, you mean? Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, Daily Show fans, you'd be like, you like Trevor Noah, right? And like, oh, I love Trevor. And it's like, what if you could just get Jon Stewart back right now? And you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I would, yeah, but I mean, I, I appreciate having it around. And I'd probably laugh, watch Last Week Tonight more, but, like... Um, so there's just some things that are unavoidable that I can't do anything about. But uh, I have had a couple of ideas the more that I've thought about it. Um, and I've had about a month now. What has it been? Five weeks since you dropped the bomb? I dropped the bomb in January. We dropped the drop in January for us, but we never really yeah. specifically talked about, you know, again, the podcast. That was just kind of like, you know, some of the last minute meetings of just sure. like really ironing, really solidifying, like, okay, like we're going to do this moving forward. Oh, and I have uh, news updates to drop. Maybe I should drop one of these announcements please what? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have a co-host for these guys podcast now i was your co-host for these guys podcast i was your yes. i was your i was your i was your mcmahon i was right your, you were there every single episode i was the head of the band or uh ian's the head of the band mm -hmm. but i'm the all right you know i'm the i'm the andy richter sure uh, Mr. Daniel Bloodworth will be joining me for every single ep episode of the easy eyes podcast and i think bloodworth and i are gonna pick a new team and i think i'm gonna you know because if we call victory now that's two victories for the, the Gorgeous Gorillas. Like, I think the Gorgeous Gorillas can go off and, and be victorious. We They're only one start. point up. They're only one point up. It's super close. Yeah, but it... it, it so run it for a whole year? That yeah. Make any sense. No. What is that going to... Then it, then, uh, it doesn't matter. Like, that's the thing. That's why well, I don't get too obsessed with sports. It's just like, that's called a win. <laughs> you know, it's like they did it. By the time you left, and there was only one more person on Sick Owl, so we got to change people in the middle of the season like it, it's over we did it it's a whole new pod we're talking about framing a whole new podcast okay a you know what podcast a whole new podcast you know what i won't criticize it by all means you're right we're talking uh, about nuking all these different segments but yes. like no no but those yeah, precious yeah, yeah. sick owls gotta mm -hmm. fight it out you know like, okay what? so tell me how why perfect you... is it that we they're the damn sick owls mm -hmm. tootsie's over pokemon whatever playing again allegedly you know like all these tragic things are happening and then boom right on top of that uh tell me why you picked daniel bloodworth um, because he and I, so here's the thing again, it's, I think the podcast is going to be apologies. There's a little more serious and I don't mean that as a, as an offense, but I think it's going to be let, like you put on, you put on a damn good show. I can't put, I don't think I can put on the show that you put on, but I think I can take it in a different direction in terms of honestly trying to understand what the hell's happening and, and and actually trying to track that week to week. So not just only talking about stuff that we're doing, but like, dare I say it, like, I don't hate things like the desire index. Like, I don't hate things. I love the bets that the love and respect questions that come back, the sequels, the games that have sequels and the, you know, like, you know, calling upon those things, which is why love and respect, I think, is so important, you know, in, in not just having that Q&A feedback with the community, but having those things that pop up, those, you know, recalling things from previous episodes that we never realize. The stuff people have brought out for like our 50, 100, 150, 200 for those like landmark episodes or like our 100th review. Like I went back through all the scripts, just like, whoa, like stuff that we would never have a chance to do. And it's crazy that people are like paying to get to that point. Um, but... Yeah, I think with blood in the co-pilot seat, you know, in, in terms of him being the one that is actively going out and talking to all of these people and then now me, the one that's talking with the rest of the allies and trying to figure out business wise what this industry is doing. I think the two of us. That's good. Just, and he know. stays on top of his news, too. He's the kind of guy that like he, he might not know all the news that's going on, but he won't forget a piece of a headline that he saw. So two weeks later, I might yeah. be like, oh, that's a company. He's like, don't you remember? And like he might, you know. He's got that laptop, too. We might both have laptops out. I want to make more of an active practice of, okay, if something just came up that we don't know, and I'm sorry if I'm going on a rant here, but uh, or uh, just a, um, going off the specific subjects we were talking about, but if something just came up out of nowhere, let's make sure we understand it before we move on. And that's actually something, that's one of my questions, I guess, that we can jump to, because this also has to do with... No, questions no. for me are on the second half of this podcast. But it also has to do with what I, how, how I 
you know, envision the rest of the podcast is I think a lot of instances I can speak personally for myself. You educated me 90 percent of the stuff that we talked about in the podcast. I was like, I yeah. didn't know that. Or, yeah, yeah, I saw that game got announced, but I haven't seen the trailer. I didn't know all the specific details. Or even if I saw it, like read a press release, sometimes you'll bring up stuff that I'm like, I didn't know that. I didn't That's know that why I like you recruiting it. blood. I think I think blood is actually going to be really good for that position, too. But even the specific guy, say something like BlizzCon comes out, like mm-hmm. I don't want to be. I want to be very active in like, you know, contacting Huber and Ben. And again, this is not like a, I think the podcast faulted for you not doing stuff like this, but just give it a spin and like almost have like a correspondence vibe with the rest of the guys where like, you know, half of the time it's just going to be headlines that pop up that I'm going to throw at you. But like some of the time I'm going to need you guys because I haven't done, especially right away, like I haven't did, I've never done this job before. And so uh, even back at game trailers, even before like Visible What, like I've never hosted the main podcast that we have. It was always something, some other cra- person's cockamamie idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, it'd be really interesting to be like, this thing happened. Huber, you're on top of it. What did you? And he's like, okay, so I did some digging. Here's what we think it is. That's cool. Because I, I always like felt bad. I always felt bad sitting in my seat that I'm like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know what this company's going to do. I don't. I, I felt, you know, horrible whenever you'd throw something to me and be like, okay, Jones, finally time for you to comment. What do you think? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I got nothing. I, sure. Like, this company could do anything. Amy Henney could work on anything right now. I have no, you know, like my brain's just empty. I have no idea. And so be ready for that more, have steps in, in the, you know, have a process for that more. I don't know if it's like a bit or a segment we do on the show or anything, but, um, and we can get, again, I have ideas for that. We can get to later, but, uh, so I got one and I'm doing tips later, but I have one piece of advice for Bloodworth yes. as, as your permanent co-host is you must absolutely rag on him. Because Rag on Bloodworth? Yes. Bloodworth has a way better sense of humor than I think he's ever given credit for. Sure. He can roll with things. He can punch yeah. back with things. And so I think, yes, a very serious thing. Like, he'll be very news-oriented. Yes, 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 yes. You must rag on him. Yeah. Because then I think I think that helps with the audience as well. It helps with everybody be, be more comfortable. Blood can handle jokes and he can dish it back. I think absolutely it, well, that w- you need this kind of dynamic. The moments I really treasured on the show were when you would to be doing a bit at somebody like you and doing this in Damiani was always just the sweetest thing. And they wouldn't really kind of pick up on the bit right away. And I could mm-hmm. just sit on the other side of the table and I'm just like, mm, the master at work. <laughs> like, um, yeah. So I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait to, to riff on the guys in different ways, find their different breaking points. You do something uh, like trailer Jones. You only get like 10, 15 minutes to do that, but you know, get an hour and a half with these guys. And it's interesting. It's like, it was, it was creepy doing hosting for you twice because uh, it, it you really got to throw back on Trailer Jones. Like I have no problem talking. Like you have to shut me up to try to get an opinion in. But on this podcast, it's tough for me to be like, okay. And then this thing happened. And then there's a chance all three people on the t- on the table could look back at you and be like, don't know anything about it. Don't care. And then you're like, okay. <laughs> now I have to talk more than them. Or you barely get that first sentence out, and like Damiani's off, and you're just like, oh great, okay, cool. Here's the next 20 minutes of the podcast brought to you by Michael Damiani. It's funny. I mean, in the earlier podcasts, even at EZA times, I used to write questions beneath headlines for like, Mm -hmm. okay, here's some backup topics. Like these are things I could hit. And then eventually I got confident enough to find the interesting thing. I think I will go through that same process. Exactly. Yeah. I think I'm going to have a lot of little tiny bullet point notes. It helps um, a ton when I draft and I have yet really to do that. I went off your notes, so I have yet to like script an easy allies podcast. So that's going to be interesting to do for next week. It's going to be an interesting exercise. Will Ian be there every week? Yes. And Ian's going to essentially be me. So Ian's going to cue corrections music. Ian's going to start podcast halftime. Ian's going to, and we can talk about specifically how that stuff's going to work moving forward, but so it'll it'll still um, be five people. uh, Yeah. I think that, I think that works. And I, I just like having like a tech, you know, you can tell someone is, in, you know, responsible for tech. Because lockdown so, will end eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And so. <laughs> eventually, we will be back in the studio. I'm not here to make promises, baby. Yeah. I'm here to just host this po- one mm-hmm. job at a time. Okay. Yep. 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 Moving back in. That's when I host the podcast is my first job. And then we can focus on those other things. Let me get comfortable with uh, just this one thing. Just this Fair one enough. Role. But I really imagine blood is kind of being like that general topic investigator whereas ian's the one when we're like what does prince of persia look like and it's like oh wait no <laughs> you know like ian's like i'm on it you know like he'll find that's so like a date yes. or something or that is so he's so clutch for that stuff. whereas yeah. blood might kind of drift away from the conversation for a couple of seconds as i'm talking to the panelists to really like find the quote and just like ah here it is i know what they you know so he can get caught up to date but, uh um, what about don 
What about Don? I mean, mm-hmm. I've never Don and I have never had a conversation about anything regarding the podcast. So what's the is Don? Don doesn't want to do the podcast, right? Right. I'm, I'm asking questions for the audience that I already know the answers to. Well, I don't know. That. I don't know. Um, Should I get him a fruit basket or something and try to get him on? We just um, see he's got, we see he's got a great personality. We see every time right. he talks, he says something incredibly funny and insightful. Right. Why, why is he not on the podcast? He's again he's like you know shadow in final fantasy 6 he's one of the best characters not a lot not in the game a lot you know great so that's when whenever barrel 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 and you go oh, oh, and, you went, and you see him it's like oh he's back he's in the party you finally get him in the end you're like i'm gonna make him my main um but if he was on the front of the box it would be different it'd be straight yeah if, yeah, if he, if he got his it. own if he got his own side game he'd be like mm, i don't know it just doesn't can he carry the whole thing no joke i, I mean i want don involved in everything um Whatever Don's working on is always evolving at Easy Allies. Uh, I would like to get, I certainly want to get Don's expertise in the bet department because mm. uh, uh, even so much as to like have that be his segment. So that's like Don, you know, at least the bets produced by Don. We're like, I've at least checked in with Don about the approval of this bet and he thinks it's sound. Um, that's a great or, idea. Or, or, or maybe even like he, you know, uh, it'd be funny to make it a bit. <laughs> I'm spoiling it now, but like it'd be funny if like every answer, if I was just like, if I was just like, and Don submitted his own bet, but I never say what it is until like after we find out. And I always, Don's bet's always like just two off, you know, it's like, but he's not officially betting, you know, like <laughs> you, you won. I mean, Don was real close. Don bullseye this one, you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally making it up. Uh, but yeah, I want to get him involved in that process. And it, kind of the same thing with Bits with Ian and, again, with Game News with Bloodworth. Like, it's the Easy Allies podcast. And I think when you were around uh, – when you were around – I still have you for a couple more hours, damn it. Um, <laughs> back in those Bossman days, um, it was really your show. Like, GT Time was your show. Easy Allies was your show, even though both of those – the names of those shows were based on the, the company that you worked at. But it was, like, the flagship property. Um, and it's interesting if something just called, like, The Tonight Show. But it's, like, really focused on who the host is. You know, <laughs> like, you can completely tune out of a talk show or just totally fall in love with a talk show. It doesn't matter what the set looks like or who the guests are. It's just like, no, I'm really keyed into – when Colbert left and started his new show, I was like, yeah, Colbert. <laughs> I'm like, I don't watch the show. I don't like, I don't know. It's just like the Colbert Report. Like, you know, I wasn't, you know, uh, I didn't watch like a ton, but it's just, it's interesting. And so because it's the Easy Alice podcast, because you're leaving, I really don't want it to become the Brandon Jones show. Like, I don't, I, I really want to focus on, no, oh, it's the allies. You get, you try to meet as many of us as possible. Even to the point where I try to, even if somebody's not going to be on the podcast, like, can you get involved in some way, maybe leave a quote or in some way get one thing that I've always tossed around and never had the time to do, but it might be fun to kind of celebrate getting back in the studio is just like documentary footage. You know, it's like, here's a conversation I had with Brad about this, you know, just on my phone that I drop in later. Um, but, um, yeah, just get 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 them more involved. So get Ian more involved again in the the technical aspect stuff. You would throw to me. I now mm-hmm. throw to Ian. Okay. If he's down, depending on how that works. Uh, how long until you hire a new person into Easy Allies? Um, that is unknown. Got to make more money. We would love to do it. It's just mm-hmm. a lot of it's just a lot of money. And Blood brought up something recently. I think Ian maybe told. I think Jess asked about this, and Jess was like, "But you could have this type of job or this type of job." And like we've we've thought, man. I mean, if I found the end of the rainbow and just found a pot of gold like yes I, there, you know there's a whole there's a whole you know this person then this person then this person um but uh uh it's like i think th- typically that person should make more money than any of us make <laughs> you know like we are all oh, if it's an editor a person should make this much money you mean yeah yeah, yeah. so if like got you yeah so like that's the funny thing is like kyle y- you could have triple our salaries in like a year and like we really like <laughs> like we were just like easily you're just you're just living big and we're like Damn, like I could quintuple why. it easy. And now everybody's like, "Well, why would Kali?" Oh, that's why he left. <laughs> you know, it's like we the, the 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 number one gain that we have from this that creative freedom and then the ownership of the business, right, is so great. Um, you know, so much so that it's just like we're not going through huge contract disputes dealing with you leaving the company. Like on a lot of things, you're just like, "Yeah, I'll just sign their initial there. Okay, great time." You know, because you're like, "That's not why I'm <laughs> like involved in this. Right. I'm involved in it because I want to be work with these people. I want to do this stuff. I want to have this be my job." Um, and so, uh, so yeah. Long story short, I want um, the the podcast, yeah, to represent as many of us as possible. 
also to, to hit back on what we were talking about before. Don't but, you think um, it'd be exciting if there's like a new person on the podcast? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and that brings us to another point is, okay. uh, uh, you know, we've had guests on before and on Cup of Jones, I get a comments from people. We've I wanted Piscatella to be on. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of investors that I follow. that would be so much fun to like, at least get them to say something like to actually, you know, like we're not gonna report the news, but like I specifically talked to this one guy and he, said this three sentence thing that I thought would be interesting and kind of affected how I'm com- approaching this. Um, but um, again, yeah. Not, yeah. P- podcast regrets. I, I had Piscatella on the hook at one point. Right. I had him. We, we were having email co- correspondence and it fell through. And, you know, we're obviously we're in lockdown now. But like it, we were we were so close at one point. I had so many questions for him, Jones. I could have done like an hour just talking to him about his job. I'll, I'll get him. One okay. Of these days. I will send you questions if you get. Okay. Them. Oh, great. let me know. Let me You'll know keep... if you're getting them. I have a lot of questions for that man. You keep my email, Kyle. Uh, yeah. I Do I, I get to keep email. my? This is another question. Do I get to keep my Easy Allies email? You don't have to keep every anything. We're keep we're we're you, you're shutting off your email. Okay. Changing the password. Sure, that's fair. Changing that's fair. the keys. Give me one week with my Easy Allies email because there's a lot of emails yeah, I've yeah. not no, responded no, no, no. to yet. Okay. All right. Totally understand. You can All take right. a lot of time. Okay. They gave me two weeks. They gave me two weeks at Defy, I think. Nice. But um, um I did not do enough with that. <laughs> There's so many things. What? On that game trailer's account that I was like, hey, oh, I, oh. <laughs> you know, like I didn't update oh crap. Definitely. There was one time there was one time I ran into a guy at a video game store in Syracuse and he was like, Hey man, like can I get your email? Can we talk about stuff? And I'm like, Yeah, here's my email address. It's you know, Bossman at GameTrailers.com, right? And I like thought about it after we got fired. It's like that guy has no direct line to me anymore. Feels bad. Although I dream of having you just just walk into a group stream for five seconds to like get, bring me a coke, and I'm like, thanks, Cal. Anyway, blah blah blah. And then we never say anything. People are just like, that was, what? That was Cal. Sure. Uh, but, I can handle uh, that kind of thing. That would involve us being able to touch each other again. Which mm-hmm. we can't, we can't. It's hard to imagine that at this point. Yeah. So my next question is basically something that I know you have prepared. We have to talk about what's in and what's out for the, ah. fut- the future of this podcast. Ah. Well, I get the right. impression. I get the impression, Jonesy, that opening bits might be out. No, opening bits will stay in. Okay. Because it's part of love and respect. It's That's they go the hand key. in hand. Right. That's the key. But here's the thing. Like hmm. bits is just not just not going to think about them as bits because sometimes you get like legit gaming information. <laughs> you get like legit interesting takes from our community about subjects that I am curious about, you know. And so I think they might, you know, take a little bit of that flavor. You know, it might be just like I'm I'm collecting all of this information to see where we're at at the end of a couple months and then. You know, um, like best last lines. We actually got some cool video game. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Depressing as hell, too. To mm-hmm. go through <laughs> every single time. Yeah. You're like, how do I leave this show 30 times? Hmm. Oh, I got an idea. Yeah, I thought it was fun. Every time. So it's just like, oh, yeah. OK, let's rehearse all being sad because Kyle's leaving. Oh, yeah. thanks, Kyle. Oh, yeah, another yeah, one. Yeah. OK, great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, yeah, so uh, corrections are staying. Um, I'm going to pick my own music though. Music change. Great. Um, make it louder. I'm going to make it louder. That's yeah. the number one comment I ever see. Why is it? Why is <laughs> the correction music so quiet? You, it better be loud. Uh, I mean, it's quiet, especially recently because all of our audio options suck so bad. So I will tell you this, Jones, if you can possibly delegate that one, I totally would. What if you, you can possibly tell someone else to gather the corrections, I would, if I were you, that takes forever, dude. That adds oh. like another half to half hour to 40 minutes to podcast prep. Just oh. reading through all the comments on a YouTube page. Because you got to correct a correction. You got to read through. It's not just like, okay, copy, paste, copy, paste. Like when I do Cup of Jones, I can literally just, you know, just bring over like the comments. But no, I don't fact check the corrections too often, to be honest. And the, oh, okay. I just get, you got to sniff them, you know. Yeah, there's just you a ton of them. Just, there's just a ton yeah. of comments. So like if yeah. you could trick blood into doing that, who mm-hmm. already reads the comments anyway? And that's another thing I don't have from you is just like the big grand more homework for before you leave. Ha ha. I'll have this on my desk by tomorrow, Kyle. Mm-hmm. But your, uh, you know, what's the big to do list? What, what are the th- you, you post love and respect on what day respect of the shoot? Sure, sure, then, sure. Yeah, 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 I can do that. Do all these other things happen? Yeah. I remember I had to post uh, the podcast to YouTube one time and it just like had a heart attack. Um, all right. So the- make oh, blood sorry. do corrections. We'll see. OK. He agreed to be my co-host. We'll see else what else he agrees to. Great. Um, 
And keep in mind, this is, you know, I'm definitely going to move forward and change things about the podcast following this podcast, following mm. us talking next, about all these things. Being next like, week. Oh, Kyle yeah. feels that way about that thing. Cool. Um, the other thing about the corrections music is it stops in certain, but it bottoms out. And then it, so it be when it's kind of low like that, you might be like, wait, to the correct music start? So I'm going to pick something that's jamming the whole time that you always hear. Uh, the closing makes sense. Winner gets uh, Twitter final word, video recommendation, and sign off. Mm -hmm. Any, any, you know, I don't know if this you consider this technically a question for you, but like, was Twitter like a valuable thing? Did you really think like that'll be a fun way to promote somebody or give something value to? Like no, you can definitely kill that. For I think that. That's a holdover from the GT time days. Okay. When I think we were being pushed to do that more often. Really? That's yeah. so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... I'll bring it up with the guys and see you if can definitely cut that. care. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely That's cut one that. more graphic I got to render. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would cut um, that, honestly. But final word is good. Um, video recommendation is good. Um, sign up's fun. It'd be... I wonder if I should put that... Well, sometimes that episode's not even up yet, but I wonder if, like, do you ever think about... Linking that somehow in the tags at the end or linking that in... Um, I think we used to do that. In the description or something? Yeah, I think we absolutely used to do that. It's a good Cause idea. Because that's, that's one thing, too, is I will... Like, Cup of Jones has evolved so much over the years because it's just some dumb thing that I do. And so I try to make it easy for myself. And then later I'm like, oh, you know what I could do is I could... Uh, and I'll realize, like, some step I could have taken two years ago that I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it that way now forever because, boy, I've been wasting my time. And so I'll get those as the weeks go on and get more comfortable with the job. And then sure. be like, you know what? There's actually a better way we could do this. So um, I will definitely hopefully be adding features to the, the show. Um, shout outs because we have the Patreon tier. So those aren't going anywhere. Great. Uh, love and respect. I'll be horrible at it for a couple weeks, but I'll get all the I'll get the the cobwebs out. I have two Rufuses and one doesn't work. Oh, we, you checked on them. To, we have to sort the Rufus situation. I mean, maybe they might be like in boxes or something in the studio, but... Do you have one right with you right now? They're not up on the shelves. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay, so you can introduce yes. love and respect tonight. That's great. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Right cool, 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 cool. All right. Sounds nice. good, but what if he doesn't sound good someday? What if he doesn't like this climate? You know, it's a new, it's a new, uh, whole new environment he's playing. Sure. I'm just nervous. He's been in the uh, garage before. And then bets, yeah, but they're gonna say the same. Uh, I know it's not super important, but as an editor, like I always respected that one and a half hour running time that you always shot for. So like mm -hmm. that, that that worked. Sure. I don't know if you have any words of uh, wisdom in terms of uh, why specifically that time, but I, I always felt that was just. I don't. We kind of settled into it eventually. I think we yeah. started off closer to an hour, and then like an hour and a half really, it just felt right. It ju you f you can feel two hours when it changes because we had that your last one last week that was yeah. uh, that was a two hour one. Um, did you intentionally do that? Were you just like, let's do another love and respect? I was milking it a little bit for sure. But uh, um, yeah, one and a half just feels right. Mm -hmm. um, so all those things are definitely staying. Uh, the opening, so the, there's three, four things I'm not sure about. Mm -hmm. um, two of them I'm going to add, so we can maybe talk about those later. But the opening bit in podcast halftime, um, I think it's best. I want to continue doing the opening stuff because I think it's best for the communities to stay involved. So it's something other than love and respect that we do, that we take questions every week. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, uh, even just something like like best GameCube games, and it's just like we have to pick one GameCube game. The panel has to pick one GameCube game out of these two that these people suggested, and then that's gone. That's, that's good. Over, but you know, it's like a bracket. That and works. Then we pick at the end like what the best GameCube games. There's something fun like that. Um, that I'm just like whew, I don't have to think about it being just like ah oh, so clever, you know, and can kind of get a vibe for like what I suggested, what feedback I got how that worked and then okay now what i'm going to do the next one so are you, you telling me are you telling me you would never do anything our audience you never intentionally do something that you know our audience will hate i can't say because i don't know what that feels like <laughs> feels all, all good. i know is, <laughs> feels good yeah see I, I sadly i've only been on the other side of that kyle for so long <laughs> so, okay so the, the joker stuff here's what we're doing this week like okay great cool <laughs> All the times. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And so many of the guys, you, like, you, there haven't been many fights. There haven't been many times that you started an Easy Allies podcast and been like, okay, so we're going to do this thing. And somebody's like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing it. True. I would have thought Brad or Damiani or, or Bloodworth, one of them, just like Huber will do anything. But, you know, Ian always plays along. I don't know how he did it. Uh, and then, um, so yeah, just the bits will get creative and more. I'll just I'll use this the the opportunity better as time goes on. But uh, or maybe my co-hosts Ian and Blood will have a wonderful idea for the first opening bit. I don't know if you're gonna you, you can spare some scraps, Bossman. If you have one parting bit 
that we can at least do the first couple episodes of. I or... don't. I usually came up with them <laughs> week of. Okay, good to know. I mean, yeah. that's a good. Yeah, that's a good question. I didn't have that question. Uh, and then there's podcast halftime. Just because I'm going to continue doing podcast halftime, the read, and so it's weird for the person to start podcast halftime. That's also the person reading podcast halftime. So I'm going to keep podcast halftime. I just don't know if I'm going to call it podcast halftime and what the music track's going to be. And if I'm going to be like, oh, it's a thing that's starting because it's me to, to myself. Oh, Brandon, it's time. You know, like it's not going to have the same vibe. I you would hear it. And then I would do the bit where, oh, yeah, I hear what you're hearing. I hear what you're saying because and the moderator the needs to call it. it out. But it was like you and I had some weird psychic musical link. Yeah. yeah where yeah, yeah, yeah. it just doesn't. Um, where if I'm also the announcer and the host, I could just do a different thing. You know, it's like I don't want to be that is podcast every time is like the one thing I put myself in your shoes and been like, these shoes don't fit. It's just not it's not the way I would do. And I think it would be cleaner because uh, I can just have it be. It's not like this big like we're starting the you know like the record going off like we're stopping the podcast. It could just be like, hey, I'm gonna do an ad thing. Okay, I'm out. You know, like make it a little bit smoother. I think that's how um, the pros like to do it. And then when I'm cutting it later, you don't even hear it happen. So like if you're a patron, if you're not, if you're not a patron, the podcast halftime isn't even on the it's not even on the docket. Yeah. You know? Like there's no because there was we didn't script that whenever we did the podcast. You would always just throw podcast halftime to me and then you'd have to just kind of guess. Like, oh, is Jones. OK, Jones is done. And then continue where you would leave off. Um, and so now I can do that and I can know specifically when that's going to wedge in. And so I can just get it. I don't know. Just make um, less less of a, a big thing about it. Jones, I did want to say one thing. I don't know if I ever got to say this in the podcast itself. Um, I did most of the time come up with the intro segments like the week of, but mm -hmm. like Glenny's Cauldron I had planned for a while and it was part of the podcast graphics for a super long time throughout all of uh, uh, Pro Strats only. Glenny's Cauldron was there in the graphics. And so, like, it's like, I know, I know you hate this, and I'm going to keep doing, I have the next idea, but I'm waiting on that. And so, I don't think anyone ever noticed the cauldron was there the whole time. That really bummed me out. I thought people would be like, dude, this is, this is next level, man. This but is. But you got to feel, you got to feel proud that you got it in there. You know, that you got it, you got it past them. Sure. You know? Yeah, that helps a little bit. You know, there's got to be at least a dozen fans of these podcasts who are like, damn it. It, what I know somebody said they what, what's that thing but I thought oh I'm upset uh there is a floppy disk Jones in the, in okay. the space that hasn't and, been used yet and oh it, can it I was use? gonna be part of an opening bit and oh. I didn't use that one actually but okay. yeah there, if, if you ever want to use that floppy disk it's out there floppy disk yeah, yeah. I could make that work okay cool cool no, cool, 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 again, cool no inspiration from floppy disk Got and it. then there's uh two things I'm going to add but that's technically a separate question no um no you want to get into that now well, uh, yeah, because I asked what you're going to add, what you're going to remove. So absolutely. Oh, okay. What are you going to add? What are you going to add? Um, again, I'm not sure about it, mm -hmm. but like it's the kind of thing where I was always like, oh, that's not a terrible idea. I could whenever somebody would bring it up on Cup of Jones. And this has happened like a lot. And I would be like, oh, I don't love it. I'm not like, totally against it. If Kyle wants to do it, I'll be like, sure. But if it's like more work for me, nah. but uh, kind of funny. And other people do a live like blurb before they go live or sometimes there's some of their podcasts they do live and then they segment that stuff out later uh on patreon or on youtube or something like that but just the idea of like going live for like 15 minutes before we shoot the podcast just kind of like a pre-podcast like okay we're all set up um and uh we, and tonight we're going to talk about so i got damiana here we're going to talk about that direct and then bloodworth what else are we talking about he's like well i'm reading this right now blah blah blah, blah. just like cool so that's gonna be our podcast tonight anything else anything you missed in chats like yeah but this trailer came out I'm like no 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 we're not talking about that and like oh that was kind of cool okay cool time, time to start the podcast uh and then promote it you know like hey everybody we're about to sh and then actually record this part um i mean for posterity we're about to shoot the easy allies podcast we're going to talk about these things these are my guests uh if you're a patron patreon.com slash easy allies you get it five days early uh or sorry you get it two days early four or five dollars and you get to be a part of love and respect and everything but otherwise you can check this out on sunday so give it a look and then that part of that live stream we put up on twitter before the podcast goes up that's very good jonesy but it's just more work you know it's like, uh, you know like so is uh, that is that something i'm gonna do like <laughs> you know right away i don't know um but um yeah hey man I specifically if, if like, kind of funny can do it you can do it. 
<laughs> um, I thought it'd be so funny to wear a kind of funny shirt for this podcast. Just to be <laughs> sure. I think I'm a little easy on too. You wear my, you wear my Mega 64. So. Um, I, and I also think it's a really good idea to canvas the community for headlines, which I've done multiple times. Sometimes they got some good stuff and sometimes they have some very stupid things, but generally it's going to make the podcast better. Uh, Bloodworth's going to be my co-host. Ian's mm-hmm. going to help with uh, technical stuff and hopefully bits. Um, like I mentioned, I'm going to try to get the other allies more involved, not in like, you know, reporting, you know, being like, hi, this is Michael Huber. I'm here. Or here's like the, the package that I did. But like sometimes I might talk to somebody like before we shoot the podcast. And so when I throw to them, it's not just like I'm obviously going to the most knowledgeable person that person's prepped and they know that you know, I'm going to talk to them um, because I want to keep I want to keep the vibe going that like we ad- admit we don't know everything that's why we have corrections mm-hmm. it's, it, this is not the podcast about oh I found out about all of that information hopefully we try to get as much stuff right as we possibly can it's this happened how do we feel about it you know like that's generally what um, and we could talk about mission statements you know I can read those off uh, I wrote down Kyle's original quote on the first episode of the Easy Allies podcast. Which I think be- I think you picked it because it has become completely untrue, if I remember what I said originally. Oh, no, it's great. Oh, okay, It's, cool. a, it's an aspiration, you know? Just because Actually, you plan on doing something doesn't mean you're going to get the podcast Let's do that. Let's do that now because okay. I asked you what your vision for the podcast is. Yeah. Let's hear, let's hear my statement and then let's hear your statement. This is primarily a news-based podcast. <laughs> I like to talk about what's happening this week. Also... I like to guess about things. Mm. That's one of my favorite things, to make predictions. So that appears in this podcast a lot as well. We like to have fun. We like to stay on point. Wow. That second part, I don't know if I fulfilled. We like to have fun. We like to stay on point. Well, here's, yeah, I guess so. The staying on point is we would go on tangents and riffs for sure. Sure, yeah, yeah. We were never like, hey, man, how's your breakfast going? (laughs) Right, (laughs) And it's just like, man, I can't stand scrambled eggs. It's like, oh, <laughs> come on, bro. Uh, like, obviously, we would have beginnings of podcasts where it's just complete right. fairy tale nonsense for maybe 10 minutes. Um, but that's that's also not staying on topic. It's two different ways of avoiding news. Um, so I can't say I really fulfilled that promise. All right. Here's mine. Yeah, okay. It is longer, but it's th- that was me just, you know, paraphrasing you or like you, you said some ums in there, but that's basically what you said live on the podcast. But this is me. I'm sure there's right. many ums in there. Yeah, this is me writing this. So it might sound eloquent, but I, I specifically wrote this out to try to get all my points down. We react to the most affecting gaming news of the week. Mm-hmm. We predict and bet on what will happen in the weeks ahead and discuss our understanding of what's happened in the past week. We prioritize covering decisions and announcements that affect the business of the industry ahead of discussing our impressions of games we're playing. We do as much analysis and live fact checking as possible before making assumptions and correct ourselves the following week if necessary. Ooh. It's basically just kind of like the things, but most specifically, we react to the most affecting gaming news of the week. Yeah, that was nice. Sometimes things will happen that you're like, we know. You guys are going to talk about that, right? And it's like, well, what's there to talk about? You yeah. know, like we, that that thing happened and we're, that happened, you know, like court cases a lot of times were like that where somebody would, you know, the, the, the jury's out on that guy or something and great. <laughs> you know, it's like, what do we talk about yeah. after the fact? You talk about it, you know, if there's potential legal trouble between somebody or somebody leaves a company or something, but um, if a game gets canceled, but um, a lot of times those things might make spicy news, but don't necessarily... If you can tell, because there's never been a time, I mean, Scout's Honor, like, I, people might not believe us, but there's never been a time that one of us was like, please, Kyle, we want to talk about this on the podcast. And you were like, no. Like, you know, if if there was some big headline that people were like, I'm so surprised you guys didn't talk about that scandalous thing. None of us wanted to talk about it. Like, nobody was, was begging. We were all just like, no, nah, let's skip that, you know. Sure. On the other hand, uh, when a lot of people said like, hey, man, why don't you talk about Nier Automata? It like, sometimes it's like, okay, let's do it next week. That yeah. happened too, for sure. I'm going to be a big fan of those love and respect questions because that's one of the things I love about the Community Showcase where somebody's just like, hey, check out this World War II tactical game and just like from 1984. And like, yep, let's do it. You know, like I love. Yeah. Or, you know, and, or I'm a sucker for any any just kind of like life story, any just like connecting with a parent or a child or, you know, uh, we've the stories we've had about people with, you know, medical problems or, you know, we just had an amazing story of somebody guy went to prison and it's just like not even playing games, but it's just like experiencing the art of games and that's inspiring him to educate himself. And yeah, it's um, cool stuff. It's cool. Yeah, it's it's tempting to do 
love and respect for like an hour, man. It's it's such a uh, it can be such a rewarding segment. It's gonna be really fascinating seeing just the submissions. That's gonna be different from a lot of the submissions. I will say that yeah, hardest part is cutting some out. You know, I'll, I'll take oh, like sure. eight or ten and put them in my rundown, and yeah. then of those, only put in four or three. It was heartbreaking when I hosted it a couple times, where I was just like, "Oof, that's a great question," but we've already kind of talked about it. It just doesn't fit into other things that we're doing. Um, yeah. So, other wild ideas that I have. Uh, I mean, more trailers probably. So, like, I got some comments on Cup of Jones. People were like, "You should do a trailer thing every week," and like, I'm not gonna because there some might some weeks there might not be a trailer. I don't want to make that. A thing. Are you gonna Everybody's show the trailer? Through. No, but I just might trailers might be more of a part of the conversation when I bring up, I might ask the panelists to watch more trailers than I remember, you know, that was always a moment. Um, I, yeah, would get right in the front row whenever you were like, okay, everybody got a trailer. I need you to watch. And it was just like, Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go. I like so, those. Um, but specifically talking about marketing, which is another thing, just a, a more of an analysis on marketing. Um, I love that. Cause you are, you know, so much of your moderating was the questions that you asked. You know, it was just like, especially when a conversation had potentially run its course about halfway through us, you know, going over it. And then you'd be like, yeah, 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 all that's great. But, you know, to either get back to the point or specifically to get, you know, the type of conversation that I want to get going or the answers that I want to get, let's go back to this point. And sometimes when we get back to that, it might be me being like, what does this mean for, you know, the ad writers, the trailer makers? What's that trailer going to be like when we first see it? You know, Ian, OK, you you get to make the trailer. What are you going to do? Like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the desire index. Something I'm going to be I'm going to be looking at you, desire index and thinking about you. Oh, I don't. I, I know you're enraging half the comments. You might have to rename it. I but... don't. That's the thing is I need to feel that fire from the community about the desire index firsthand. Yeah. I need to, I need to yeah. saddle up to the campfire and be like, oh, woohoo, that's hot. OK. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll step away from it. But you I got know, I'm, I'm in huge support of that idea. I got to admit, every time we let the desire index go, I was like, what? It's like 12 games. Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's yeah. do the desire index. Let's stick to it. Because um, my favorite part of that was like, hey, this new trailer came out this week. Does right? this affect where this game is on the desire index? That's like the, so that like was not, the, yeah. the maybe, idea. Maybe not make it so like McRib. Oh, it's just kind of like, oh, we're just doing it for this time. It's just like, no, this is always it's always some stupid list that I keep, you know. And again, again, that's a good, you know, like good way to rail on Bloodworth. It's just like Bloodworth being like, yeah, I just uh, so you like that trailer, Blood. And like, yeah, yeah, I thought it was cool. And it just kind of looked fun. It's like, would you say? you like that game now more than this other game? And he's just like, I don't know. I, what's, yeah, what's he'll never trailer? say. And he'll I'm never like, say. And I'm like, well, Blood, if you check our desire index, that's actually, you're like, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Really I love that. that way. But yes. I don't know. That, that's not, again, like so many of these things I might talk about in this episode are like maybe not going to be, I'll be lucky to just get through an episode of the podcast. Just be, just bare bones as we had done it before. Um, corporate shakeups and when's next gen? Do you want the songs? I don't think I have any right to play those songs. Okay, sure. You know what I mean? It feels wrong. Do you want the song for when somebody has to feel themselves? <laughs> I mean, there's no problem in sending me those songs. You know, it's like we haven't done that in forever. We've not done feels themselves in forever. Do you have that? You said you play that through iTunes. Do you have that? Yeah. It's like an MP3 or something you have, or what do you? Yeah, it would be a little tricky. To, yeah. Is this legal, Kyle? Can you just send me that. It's semi-legal because we play such a small clip. No, I mean you sending me the music though. Sending I'm sending you little tiny baby clips. Oh, it's just a no. baby clip. Oh, okay. Probably not super legal, no. There's only so long I can play that Generation Next song. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah, true. there's so many. Well, it but it's tough. It's like, what what do I do? There's only so many wins I can get here, Kyle. Is the win doing what you did, or is the win not doing it and making the fun win of is it not doing it? You know what the I mean? Win in, the win is not doing the win it. You're is right. Just like, oh, is this the thing you're expecting? Screw that thing. Uh huh. Because here's he, Kyle who. Yeah, yeah, I feel like let's say you're playing the Spice Girls song, right? And Brad will look at you and say, "This sucks." All I can imagine is you shriveling. <laughs> All I can imagine is like you not being able to really back up the Spice I'm Girls. Ju- I'm just doing the thing. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't I write the song. I didn't mm-hmm. think of the segment. It might be best to let those two things die. Actually, yeah, absolutely. What the other thing too is, I'm just a I'm in the video editor, and so the stuff that I add is in post. So I'm not going to oh, play yeah. something live. It's not my style. Okay. It's my sure. style to maybe bring it in. Uh, Jones, that was the last of my questions. Ooh. So now I have tips for you. Hosting tips. You ready? I'm so ready. Okay. I need them. I'm going to be listening to this podcast many times. Always keep the listeners in mind. Mm-hmm. It's not just a video. 
So about one third of our audience is podcast listeners. Yes. And then I also assume that people on YouTube probably aren't watching it with their eyeballs the whole time. They're probably listening a lot. So yeah, describe things when necessary, even Mm -hmm. expressions, even motions. Uh, always worth describing to people who are just listening. It was fun. It was always fun when I did something and then I would be like, oh no, I just did a thing. And then you were like, listeners, if you could see Jones and I'm like, he got me. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Oh, you knew it was coming. You knew the listeners thing was coming is what you're saying. Ju- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, I, well, I shouldn't have that, you know, that expression was a bit bigger than, and sometimes even when I was cutting the podcast in the studio, it might be a close up on you. And so they didn't pick, Yeah, you know. I, I would if I'm like, oh, the camera's on Kyle. All right, I'll get a sip of water. I'll, you know, for listeners, I'll you should know my phone real quick. You should know Jones has a very mustache heavy beard right now. Mustache heavy. The mustache is thicker than the rest of the beard. Is it? Yeah, I see like a very old timey long mustache that kind of curves up into your sideburns mm. and then less on the chin. Mm. Yeah, I could kind of I could do the like the like swoop. Wait, yeah, don't do that. Down don't. to here. You know, yeah, just like the. Very old Western. Yeah. Um, next tip. Challenge ideas you disagree with or that someone doesn't defend. So even if even if you agree with this person, if Damiani is just sitting there mm. and he's just like, nobody wants Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. And obviously that's true, right? Yeah. Um, still challenge him. Still say, obviously. Why would you say that? Ask why a lot. Yeah, uh, devil's advocate all over the place. Yes, kind of exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it'd be kind of fun for people to be like to not know where, um, yeah, specifically yeah. where I'm going to come from. I'm all about also tracking down the person that's being silent, just being like, you mm-hmm. haven't said anything in ten minutes. Like, yeah, that was one of my. That's one of my next ones. Is uh, 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 say someone's name before you ask a question. For that, for oh. that. So you're like Bloodworth. Yeah. I hear that says blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And so it is, it basically signals to that person, hey, like, pay attention right now. This next question's for you. But also it's to other people like, hey, lay off. This is this person's time to yeah. answer a question. It was funny so when, just an when easy we'd tip. Like, talk about something Star Wars and you'd be like, okay, so Huber, what do you think about that Star Wars thing? And Huber's like, well, it's just kind of fun. I like the game. And he's like, Bloodworth, what did you think about that Star Wars thing? Mm-hmm. And you'd just be like, oh, it's kind of interesting. And you'd be like, hmm, Jones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? exactly. And I'm like, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have opinions. I've thought about this a lot today. Use that um, tool, Jonesy. It's good. Yeah. Um, uh, if a conversation is rolling, let it roll. If a conversation mm. is dying, move on. And I think you already, you already, mm-hmm. we were already talked about this tip. It's just the you, you got to get in the groove of when the halftime hits and when. Uh, mm-hmm. I like doing the sponsors right in the middle. I definitely want to keep that. Um, sure, obviously, but uh, um, how long love and respect should be when the podcast is running long about what times usually the closing of the show should start. Yeah. I mean, sometimes there's even headlines though that I've picked up where it's like, there's no time for this. I'd rather talk about this thing for longer. And so you can absolutely toss stuff out of the podcast. Yeah. Nothing's precious. Right. So yeah, yeah. if the conversation is great. And then obviously, like you said before, sometimes you bring something up and there's that space and you're like, okay, no one's got to take, no one cares. We have to move (laughs) on from this thing quickly. And that works too. Yeah. Okay. It's best for the audience too. Um, don't take the game seriously. This is something that took me forever to learn. Do you remember, like, I used to keep track of the points when we were playing, like, you know, <laughs> sure. even, like, Pokemon, a real animal, right? It's like, okay, I need an answer from you, Bloodworth. You know what I mean? Right. And then just, like, <laughs> like, really, that's much more Have of a it, flow thing. Yeah, if you change that, I never noticed it. I never noticed, like, oh, your boss, he's got a different vibe. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. And it, even if it's, it's the gap afterward, too, if nobody has answered for a second, I just blurt out the answer. That's why I like I didn't get the answer. It's like be faster. It's the podcast, baby. That's why I like Or Wars. You ever watch uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah, I think that show's like still around. I just there, you know once you've seen 120 episodes of that show, you're like I'm kind of done. Like even if the new ones are funny, it's just like. Um, but like man, I used to watch the show a ton with the British guy way back in the day. And what I loved is he gave out the points. It's like Calvin Ball. He just completely gave them out arbitrarily. He was just like, yeah. oh yes, and you get a million points, which puts you in the lead, which you win today. And like the other people would be like, what? Come on! Like yeah, he was terrible today. Um, and it's kind of like the podcast. Like the winner would get to do the credits, and we get to like wrap up the show. Um, so good good tips good tips cool um ask a big question uh for sips if you need a sip of water <laughs> you if you need a sip of water you pose something to jones that you know he can go off on right yeah sure i've done this a few times where it's just like 
just like you say it's like it's like john's what would batman do in this situation <laughs> you know, <I'm> just, <laughs> i've done it a few times in this very conversation honestly um that's the tippiest tip there is is like you, you won't have to separate your own speech if you just toss it to someone else to talk for a while yeah um last tip this one's really important support the bits Yes, and everything. Sure, of course. So if somebody's doing a voice, if somebody's doing a character, yeah. <laughs> you have to respond to that character. You have to. That's what I realized on most podcasts, but certainly with you, is you can't... There's no like, oh, that reminds me of that one set. Well, anyway. It's like, you have to tell that story if you're a podcast. You're never yes. going to get away with being like, oh, yes. yeah, that's like that platformer. Anyway, no, it's like, no, no, no. What's the what platformer? What are you talking about? You know? Yeah. You're right. And anytime anybody's just like, uh, you know what? I, I, I shouldn't say it's like, no, it's out now, buddy. Yeah, for sure. That's another thing. Yeah. Nobody, um, nobody gets out of here without singing the blues. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, supporting bits, I think, is, is just super, super important. It's uh, you can't let Brad bury a bit. He'll do it every time. He'll ask He'll, when it's over. Yeah. 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 Just for everybody at home. Whenever we have meetings, Brad's always the first guy who's like, all right, are we done? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, the, that's the timer on your phone. Right. So over. <laughs> if you're doing Joker news and he's just like, hey, isn't this fake? You're like, no, Brad, this is very real. Did you ever get mad at me? Did when, if I, when I ever was like, because I always wanted to give you a hard time during the podcast and there are different ways that I could do it. And one way mm-hmm. is like, oh, is this the bit we're doing? There was that, you know, bit, that attitude. Did mm-hmm. that ever really get under your skin? Was, was oh. there ever episodes where you're like, John, please, I need your, <laughs> I need your I'll, support. I'll right tell now. you, I'll tell you when I was most disappointed. This was the two podcasts I was away and we did this week in Austin Powers news. Now, this was oh. the, the simplest home run bit. This was the easiest possible bit in the world. I said, Jones, here's all you have to say. And then no riffing. And then basically the bit is you're all doing this for me because I'm home with my family right. in a family emergency. Yeah. And so you'll just do it. You'll just do this for Kyle. No riffing. You, clearly nobody's comfortable with it, but you just say it and you move on. And yet, Jonesy, you riffed. Yet you riffed. And you said out loud, you said, and Kyle says, no riffing. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then you did the same exact thing the next week. And Brad's like, Kyle, you can do better. And it's like, Brad, that's the bit, you dummy. That's the whole stupid bit. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was the time I was disappointed. That that bit was not supported. It was not yes-handed. Uh, and to me, just the funniest possible bit. I, lo- I loved this week in Austin Powers news. Okay, but look, it is what it is. Dropped it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, whenever, no. if anybody says no riffing, don't riff. That's because that's that's the thing, Jones. That's like what yes ending is, right? It's not necessarily saying agreeing to everything, right? Yes ending is supporting the thing that somebody's pitching to you. Yeah. So if I'm like Jones. Never, never tell me that my shirt is too white. That is me telling you to tell me that my shirt is too white. If that makes sense. Yes. That's yeah. the bit I'm setting up. Yeah. Do you, Jones, do you hear that? Sounds like it's podcast halftime. <sighs> Sorry, I just want to jam to it a little bit. Mm. Now I know you don't like this song. Oh, it's it's, it's song. It's corrections it's music doing, you don't like. It's, it's corrections music you don't like. It's doing your sports bits, man. Yeah, gotcha, Everything gotcha. is sports, sports, sports. Hey, yep. you want to talk about podcast changes? I didn't even make a note about this. No sports? Remember this NFL, mm-hmm. basketball, maybe a little baseball for Huber <laughs> just to make him feel at home? It's gone. I have no frame of reference. I can't pretend. Okay. I can't Fair suddenly enough. be like, oh, yeah, I know who that one player is versus... No, it's just gone. Fair it's enough. just not yeah. it's a different person. But there will that be more. It, that doesn't mean I'm going to bring in some hiking, you know, trivia or Disney nonsense or anything like that. You know, I'm not going to bring any of my stuff. It's easy. You should. Podcast. No, you should bring in your stuff. Bring in your stuff. That's important. If I bring in my stuff, it'll be unintentional. Okay. I'm not going to be like, I get to talk about my homes on the podcast tonight. <laughs> if you are bored in the house, bored in the house, if bored. You- Why not play with your balls? 
<laughs> our sponsor today, Manscaped, is here to make sure your balls are smooth while you or your partner are playing with them. Manscaped promotes clean hygiene when it comes to shaving your balls thanks to their Lawn Mower 3.0. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming. While you're probably looking for new things to do at home, why not make manscaping part of your routine? Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0, precision engineered tools for your family jewels. The Perfect Package 3.0 kit comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. This third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. Inside the perfect package, you'll also find the Manscaped Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You're probably sitting on the couch with your hand on your balls anyway. Might as well keep them smooth as eggs and smelling fresh. The fresh and the eggs, you think those two go together? Smell it. Smooth as eggs and smelling fresh. Jones, who's, who is smooth as eggs? Who is achieving this? Have you ever tried? I mean, have you ever tried? <laughs> you, you're, you're in such disbelief. Like, let me tell you, Jones. I don't think it's feasible. Nowhere close. Actually, it's funny that you bring this up because Ian Hink on our team swears by this stuff. Ian Hink loves Manscaped. Ian Hink does a fair, a fair amount of bodily grooming mm -hmm. and absolutely loves it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if his meter goes up to egg levels. We'll have to we'll ask. Think. I do know Ian smells fresh. I miss I miss I miss Ian's fresh smell. Mm. Subscribe to the perfect package and get a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months, making sure your trimmer always stays fresh and clean. For a limited time, subscribers get not one, but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, a $39 value add, and the patented high-performance anti-chafing manscaped boxer briefs. There's a lot of stuff in here. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Get twenty dollars off, twenty percent off, and free shipping with the code Allies twenty at Manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. Get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code Allies twenty at Manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off with free shipping at Manscaped.com. And use Allies, use the code Allies twenty. Make playing with your balls the best part of your day. Thanks, Manscaped. And if you are a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. Thank you, Jones. While we're doing thanks, um, I realized that like half of those uh, hosting tips are basically just things I stole from Keeley. Well, that's what you, that, that's 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 how you learn. Yeah, the, the like trick of like yeah. s somebody's name first. That's oh, totally yeah. totally cribbed that from Keeley. Because I used to do uh, production assistant on bonus round, a, sh a panel show he used to host. The master. mm Hmm. Yeah. And like most of the time I do a dumb bit that's also Keely. Like he you know, he did Joker stuff before way before I did. You know there's <laughs> you know there's some you know there's got to be some people that are just have been terrified of Keely over the years. Let's think a little about Reggie. I don't know if Reggie ever got scared, but you know there's some people that like Keely ask a question it's like, "Oh man, I can't." I'm mm -hmm. prepared for that or just like they'll at the game awards and they're nervous like some dev comes in. I don't think we can intimidate people. I don't think we'll ever get to that point in this industry. We could ask a question to somebody and they'd be, "Oh, oh no." Mm -hmm. Here comes Bosman or Jones. Like, I think yeah. that's I, honestly, I think that's easy. It depends on which game they're working on. It depends on their reputation. Sure. If you're talking to Todd Howard, he's sweating every interview. <laughs> you can easily intimidate Todd Howard. That if you walk confident. in, just if you say, if you here's the thing, if you have an interview with Todd Howard, you're like, hey man, I'm a really big fan of your games, and then you open a notepad to like page three, he's <laughs> yeah. he's sweating. It was funny. Somebody mentioned, uh, somebody tweeted at me or something, and they were, or I think it was a Cup of Jones question. They were like, "Congrats!" You know, it was Shane, then Ryan, then Kyle, and now you. And I was like, "Oh man, I never thought about it that way before." Legacy, the baton, dude. The baton passing, yeah. passing. Like, oh man, you're right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Actually, even with GT, even with Invisible Walls, we basically did a baton passing. I ho hosted the last two episodes of Invisible Walls before transitioning to GT time. So I have, I've had so many mentors to mm -hmm. study from over the years. Yeah. Along with these helpful tips. Are you done with tips? Oh, yeah. Tips are all done, baby. Oh, yeah, because we did the did the halftime thing there. Mm -hmm. um, so now your chance to ask me any questions. So, yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I wrote down all the bets. I guess I don't need to, like, rattle these off. But I, I went back through previous podcasts and wrote down the, the, the different types of bets that you do. And there's only four, right? No, there's a ton. Oh, OK. 
Would this I mean, be fun? R- quick yeah, list? I'm curious about this, actually, yeah. What is a product's number on the Amazon Tops Games list? Mm, we don't. I don't try to do that one too much anymore. What is the trophy's percentage? Yeah, I love those. What is a digital game's download size? Mm, uh, what is I forget active, about that. I love that. Uh, where is an active Kickstarter total? Ooh. Um, what is a game's game fact Q&A question count? <laughs> oh, that's a brand new one. We've done that once. Yeah, that's good, though. But it works, uh, yeah. What is a game's unannounced release date? If you can nail it. The last one we did was Last of Us 2, I think, and it was just perfect. It gives us right yeah. for state of play, and we all mm-hmm. knew, but it was like... Um, so, yeah, you're gifted those every now and then. Again, how many Steam user reviews does a game have? That one's pretty popular. Uh, Jones, I'll do that one when none of the others work. That's like a last resort bet. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. How many objects are visible on the front or back of a game box? Love these. How many times does this word appear in 10 reviews is probably the most popular bet that you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many people are watching a game on Twitch? Yep. What's the differential between two Twitch games? Mm-hmm. How many responses the most recent tweet have from this account? How yeah, many- those are week two. How many views does a specific video have? How many thumbs up or down does it have? Ooh, how those many, are fun. How many cosmetic items will be available in a game's character customization? How many We've done that a few times, yeah. Items, yeah. How long until something happens in a game's opening? I love these. Whenever it's whenever I can, I love those. How long like a will swear game's end credits will be? Yeah, an exclamation mm-hmm. point. A swear word in Gears was one, and an exclamation yeah. point in Ultimate Alliance. Great. How long will games credits be? And then laser focused. How many hearts does the most popular Mario Maker 2 level have? And where does Madden's cover athlete rank in jersey sales on NFL.com? That's that last one, one I don't think is maybe maybe it'll come back. <laughs> maybe I'll bring it back just for fun. Just a little super low energy that week. Um, so for the bet this week. Um, and here's one that kind of died off, Jones, because we used to do a group stream before the podcast. But I used dude. to love these when you hold forward how soon oh, until yeah. we die. And then we kind of had to kill that off because, you know, we do the podcast not before a group stream anymore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those were super fun. Or even in like a fighting game. Like, OK, we're going to just press right. How soon until somebody kills us in an f- online match? Yeah. Yeah, those are fun. But yeah. yeah miss those i'll make those happen yeah um uh but another thing because we i had my own list and i've crossed pretty much everything off of it i only have one more thing that i mean I guess this can be a question what do you think about this idea kyle okay um but one way i figured i could make the show uh potentially interesting i might be this might be something if i kill when people are like boy that's four minutes of the podcast that we didn't need and please just get rid of that um but Talk about really quickly everything else. And that can maybe be nothing, but it's just like if there is some other thing where it's like, wow, we didn't really cover this in the podcast, but just before we get into shout outs at the end, it's just like, and these three things also happened. I think that's a terrific idea. Yeah. You know, it's just like, um, and maybe somebody could tell me, ooh, that's cool. Yeah, I I did want to talk about that. And then if maybe somebody brought up something, I can make a note. If they're, you know, if Huber's like, we're not going to talk about this game announcement, I'm like, we're not, Huber, but thank you for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. And that's also kind of what the, um, that, like, if we, eventually end up doing that uh, to all of the listeners and, and people in the comments but uh, if we have some kind of live component like no, if you bring up something we don't talk about in the podcast I might bring it up at the end there and just be like and that was the week there we go we did it yeah because like uh, last week there was a headline about PlayStation giving away two free games because of COVID-19 lockdown and I totally forgot about it but it totally it would have been a great fit for there right you don't have a long conversation about PlayStation giving away free games and yeah. 10 million dollars to indie developers but it's a cool thing to bring up at least to make people aware of I like Which that is, idea a lot again another, the number one segment killer on this podcast is just like there's no conversation it's yeah. just we, we, you, you, the host would say it and we'd all nod and then that would be it and so yeah. you want to find something that's like oh that got a little salty or oh that got shouldn't kind of have done that with, kind of same thing with love and respect questions you know it's like you'll see one it's like it's a good sentiment but it's just me reading that you know mm-hmm. um okay uh what is your thought process on picking new bits like what what bits work do you like mean o- you, like the opening bits the opening bits yeah like okay. when you're when you're laying something out like what is what is like clearly you like okay i can't do that again because that didn't work or like uh, i have to do this type of bit um Man, I think that like the first one that really involved a lot of audience interaction was uh, Recruit Me. Or no, I think even before that was uh, And For That Reason. And basically after that point, they all became like, hey, we need to interact with our audience. This is too much fun. Mm. Um, uh, And so it became like just coming up with various different ideas about how to prompt our audience to come up with creative responses. You know, it's basically like writing prompts. And so I would, in the description, in the post on Patreon, say like, hey, think of this thing, think of these frames, and then phrase it like this. And so you're getting the 
you're getting the kinds of responses you're looking for, basically. And people will write a paragraph and you're like, no, 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 no. I said, keep it short. I'm not picking this paragraph. Uh, and so basically, as long as you're very clear about what you're interested in, um, they'll give it to you. Our audience in particular is extremely creative. Oh, my goodness. The out of control. Yeah. So like, in, a way, if, in a way, we could never be because their their perspective on everything that we're doing is, is so unique. So like even if you do like like best GameCube game, you could say, uh, all right, give me best GameCube game and then four words after it for why it's the best. Sure. You know what I mean? Like just like a little addition, a little like wrinkle that lends to I their like, creativity. I like that for all of the tough bouncers, people that wanted to get in, it was fun that people would say what they, why they wanted to get into the studio, what they plan to do, you know, mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the club. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah. just a little on top of it because yeah, for some, I don't know why really don't know why, uh, maybe it's a reflection of how creative we are, but like our audience is ob obscenely creative <laughs> Yeah. and funny. I mean, it would just cause the showcase, I, I just like, I get, yeah. uh, you know, baptized in that every month. Just mm -hmm. like, oh, that's right. Yeah. So funny. Um, so yeah, and that's the other thing too. Have you ever gotten an idea from a bit from something that someone said or from somebody that, you know, somebody dropped something in chat or a response to a love and respect question and you were like, ooh, that's a good one. I wonder I if people will recommend stuff on Cup of Jones. I wonder. Normally I say, thing. normally I don't want them and I'll say like, no, I'm, I'll never do that because if you do, then you'll just get those constantly. Is I don't know if there's going to be any connections between Cup of Jones and the podcast. I've never done that. You know, like I've never like planned both of those shows so like there might oh, yeah. be some pre-podcast talk in the podcast or some post notes that come in every week of just like okay jones this part of the podcast was weird we might want to change that um i would Let's say see. uh glenny's cauldron to me is one of my favorite things we ever did on the podcast mm -hmm. uh the only reason i didn't do it again this year obviously is because i would be leaving and then i couldn't appreciate it <laughs> um and so and so like I'm I'm like I'm not doing Glenny's Cauldron if I don't get to see the results. Right. Uh but then having a game jam afterward was mm -hmm. so so fun. And so the idea of it all leading to something that is on top of this another creative I've had several um, people reach out. One project. one game developer that was like I really wanted to be involved in that and I was just busy at the time. But I'm not busy now. Do it now. <laughs> like mm -hmm. okay, yeah, we'll do. We'll do that I mean, again. Crazy. It's just yeah, it's so many new things. I've done a lot of things with this job. And I get to do more new things than I've never, yeah. ever, ever done before. So, and obviously, you don't have to you don't have to buy into the lore too much, right? Yeah. Like, you don't have to talk about Carcerara at the end of the podcast, but the, just this idea of oh, collecting bad ideas. Oh, I love lore. Okay, I because uh, um, a lot of that stuff just happens. I mean, a lot of the lore that I've created with you know being at Easy Allies, like I was not intentional and just said something wrong, and then you can tell like <laughs> during the you know during Silver Squad, half of that was like, wait, what mm -hmm. if I did I just said something wrong? Yeah, it happened like six seconds ago, and it's like I can't, I can't put that genie back in the bottle. It's over, it's done. Yeah. So yeah, that stuff will happen. Um, what annual bits do you enjoy most? Because I, I think it would be eh, weird. Maybe it'd leave a bad taste in my mouth. I might do it after a while if I just like, gosh darn miss you a lot. But like to go back to something you've previously done. Because mm -hmm. like if we do Glinny, it would be fun to like have it be in Glinny lore. But maybe it's not Glinny. You know, maybe like sure. somebody else is getting us like against Glinny or something. You know, like some way to shake it up. But every three months, you love to do the next three months. Um, I actually, before you leave, if you have a short list, because I don't know if I can remember all of those. I'm sure chat will remind me. By the way, next week is this, and this is when Kyle usually does. I'm excited about summer games or you oh, know, you mean like, Pop Tarts and Toaster Strudels. There's Pop-Tarts and Toaster Strudels, but there's also, I get, it's, there's somewhere between the desire, Pop-Tarts and Toaster Strudel and the Desire Index. There's something else that you like to do. Uh, something. I mean, obviously NP NPDs, but there's some other like annual ritual that we do, and I can't remember. There's another one where it takes place basically after E3, where we do predict what will happen a year later. Yeah. Because and then after you go, E3. Yeah, and then you go back to last year's. Yeah, yeah, champs, yeah. I'm positive. Champs, right? Um, Champs and Chumps is for the Easy Allies predictions. Got it. The Easy Allies podcast doesn't really have Champs and Chumps, okay. but you, it's a good opportunity to make fun of people for sure. Yeah. I'm a positive our audience will remind you of that. Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah. That's the other, that's the other thing too is like, you know, you help know, them out. Rake me over the coals with that stuff. On Twitter, DM about. me, hit me up, you know, message me on Patreon. Like, are you going to do Pop Tarts and Toaster Strudels? You could rename the things, but I feel like, Jones, in terms of like mm, I podcast syrup, dude. Like looking three months ahead and like picking your favorites and least favorites. Yeah. It's just such an easy, fun podcast. Oh, I love Those it. Are my favorites. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. always like, it's like when, when Bloodworth will put out the the codes list and he's like, 
you know, come kids, children, come and get your codes. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, codes. Yeah. You know, and of this. It's like, tell me your favorites now. Next three months, which one do you want to play the most? Which mm-hmm. one makes you sad? And it's just like, yeah. That it's game. Fun. I'm scared of that game, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, I got a kick out of that. So, and I just want to make sure. And it's you know, it's just like Hall of Greats. It's like any way that we can mark an event on the calendar, we can we can anticipate these things happening. I got to remember to do it. Patreon is all about Easy Allies. Has been nothing was ever like as monthly ever at Game Trailers as it is like with Easy Allies. It's like the month yeah. drives everything. Like the first, last yeah. podcast of the month, the Q and A, the you know showcase starting in the beginning of next month. The middle of the month always feels so different than the beginning and the end of the month too. It's going to be very interesting adding the Easy Allies podcast to that that grind. Yeah. Um, so, do you see a benefit? And we've already kind of talked about this, but like. With me bringing in people and having them work more on segments with me and supply me information ahead of time so that it's not like a huge surprise what I'm going to talk about or what they're going to talk about. Do you th- see an advantage also with just kind of throwing news at us? Like, did you like those moments when we're all like, wait, what? We didn't hear about this. Yeah, or of course you- I like that. Oh, OK. Or were you <laughs> like, mm, I wish they knew more so they could get more involved? Occasionally. But yeah, uh, getting raw reactions to things is also very fun. I think... I, d- I definitely have read comments of people who don't appreciate that, though, who would have preferred that the panel be educated about a thing right. before going in. And, and again, that's why when people are like, how how different could you make the Easy Allies podcast? And it's like, well, yeah. I don't think I can make it funnier. Uh, I could maybe make it more informative. A little or smarter. Maybe, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Or just you can tell like you can tell these guys are trying, you know, you can yeah. tell they really they're really trying to. Because I would always get really nervous when you'd be like, okay, so the new tech specs came out for the Xbox One Series X. And I'm like, oh, shit. They're like, <laughs> I'm going to suck. I'm going to be the, at my absolute worst during this episode, yeah. despite, you know, my best efforts. And it's like, so, Jones, what do you think? And it's like, um, you know, what way can I spin this? What other way can I talk about this that, um, you know, people might not talk about? Not, I think that's not a bad idea. Back- almost a theater major, uh, you know. Uh, back at GT time, uh I used to send out rundowns early Mm -hmm. uh, per Bloodworth's request. Yeah. Um, And maybe we can get back to that kind of thing. I mean, I might do it. I wouldn't expect anybody to read it. That's the point, as I would just reach out to one person and be like, get, I'm going to throw to you. Get ready. Yeah. You know, just so it's just like, okay, BlizzCon happened this weekend. And now, you know, um, I mean, again, like some of those things write themselves, like Damiani, obviously. Um, and it'd be interesting to do, to see what I do. I know these are technically your questions, but it's just making me think about a lot of things. It's going to mm-hmm. be interesting to see when I choose to feel myself. Like when I choose to get like some new like GTA six news drops and it's just like, Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, Oh, guess what story we're leading with, <laughs> you know, or like mm-hmm. what moments I can really just kind of like pull attention just for funsies, which is, I'm a little nervous to do right out of the gate. You know, like I yeah. want to just kind of make it, that's the thing is like, I might bring more of my personality to it. There might be big fundamental changes, but it's like, I certainly don't want to do Kyle Bossman's Easy Allies podcast. I don't want to pretend to be you unless I'm intentionally mocking you. Um, so like the first couple of episodes might be kind of like straight laced, you know, they might just kind of just get that job done, you know? And again, that first bit might just be a placeholder for me to think of what you think of my bits <laughs> or mm-hmm. like if Ian is a fun idea or like, I just had a stupid idea as we, you know, we're going through this. Um, I don't think you- I don't think this group is capable of a straight lace podcast. Yeah, like if I mean, you th- straight lace think... by construction. Sure. Know. Yeah, if you think next week's next week's podcast won't be fun or funny, oh, I think yeah. like count on it, dude. It, it yeah, just kind of works itself out most of the time. Um, and what is? How would you gauge your ruthlessness on selecting love and respect submissions? Um, Extremely ruthless. Do you think you've gotten better at that as time has gone on? Yeah, okay. it, it still hurts a lot. <laughs> I'm just picking some over some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, things. exactly. And um, you know, some people will submit a really good thing week by week, and you just have to be like, "Yeah." Ah. I was wondering, like, are there any repeats that it's like the fifth time they're posting it again, and you're like, "No, sorry." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oof. And uh, generally, it's a flow thing. Generally, it's like where you're at at the podcast. Do I need something funny? Do I need something quick? Do I need some? Do have we been too goofy? Do we need to talk about a serious thing yeah. right now? Because uh, I love that you incorporate them. That was just your idea, right? To incorporate them in the beginning of the podcast as well. Um, it'd be fun oh, if, like, because sure. there's a lot of statements that people say, and it would be fun to figure out ways to maybe add that stuff to the podcast as well. It's just like, sure. oh, that reminds me, somebody in love and respect said this. Thank you for that. And then we're not getting into their love and respect question, but um, oh yeah, that's just because I read through them all yeah. for sure. Uh, and just like to let people know, kind of the process of like how it works. Like Kyle and I. Uh, 
were really like co-producing the show in terms of like you, you know, doing the line share of the work, but like me handling a lot of the post stuff and then throwing it back mm-hmm. to you and then you throw it to Bloodworth, you know, so there was a lot of back and forth and back and forth that's going away now <laughs> because I'm just going to handle all of it. You know, I'm going to be like writing it for the show and editing the thing at the end of the day. Make and Blood so- post it. Well, I don't know. It's just tough to just suddenly like wake a dude up and be like, and now the podcast and like, uh, sure. oh, OK, you know, out of nowhere. I do bet um, it's going to come earlier. I bet the people will get the podcast earlier. Yeah, that's the other thing is I could technically post it at like four in the morning. <laughs> you know, I could just do it. Yeah. Um, why don't you do it? Uh, I yeah, that's the thing is like I need blood's help before. You know, it's yeah. like if I can take the weekend off and just kind of like, boom, post it and then deal with Sundays when it goes up for everybody else and just making sure everything's kosher and then just have, again, just Damiani, Ben, Hubert, like those guys. And we've already kind of started to do that uh, again, more behind the scenes stuff. The moment that you said you were leaving, we put up a um, uh, a uh, we just started talking about uh, the podcast in general and we put up a news channel now in Slack. In Slack. Yeah. It used to be random. Like we had a we have a random channel that's just like nonsense. We've just we feel like talking about something. It's funny for, for like for Michael Huber, every channel is random. Like <laughs> any channel might at, at one day just might get a Huber be like Vikings, dude. We're like, thank you. Thank you. And the Animal Crossing channel, Huber. Appreciate it. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so we have news now, which is great because it's just like I can rank the significance all week and be like, oh, OK, that's the big thing. Or I know you're talking. I know you know about this because you're the one that posted it in news, Michael Damiani. Um, but um, yeah. Where do you get the NPDs from? Oh, uh, Matt Piscatella. <laughs> oh, you just he just he links them on uh, social media and then legitimately. Yeah. So he makes a really good video every time. Um, but also like he does a series of tweets that are basically the bullet points you need to pull. You gave me his notes because I covered NPDs on one of the podcasts that you missed. And uh-huh. it was the greatest thing. Like, yeah. That is just. And he is at Matt Piscatella. Yeah, I think yeah. it's Matt with oh, one I, T. I follow the hell out of that man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That um, it's just that seems I'm just looking ahead at like having themes for shows. And it's just like, what a beautiful. Yeah. A beautiful uh, for some reason, to have. they started releasing them on a less convenient day. We haven't done NPDs in a long time because it used to be like the day of the podcast and they'd right. be so hot and fresh. And then it's kind of they, they changed the day. But yeah, it's still worth doing some weeks for sure. One final question. Mm-hmm. And it's something else I've been thinking of like, well, that's a way I could shake up the podcast. Sure. And once in a, once upon a time, we had a goal on patreon.com slash easy allies for 50K uh, to have like a guest show or to have like, a, or is it something that I've talked about, you know, potentially having like a, um, where I'd have a co host, somebody that we would, you know, maybe getting somebody else to edit it and, and bringing in a different guest every single week. Um, there's the upside and the downside of guests. The upside is you bring in a new person, you promote the podcast more. Um, somebody like, you know, uh, Matt Piscatel would be great. And I'm just, again, just thinking like, it'd be interesting to have a lot of like business minds to have somebody come in and be like, yes, I can finally do a segment, you know, actually have somebody from, uh, um, digital foundry on <laughs> the podcast, yeah. like to talk about something um so again it's not like we're reporting the news but like at least we can and, and again it's not like okay now we're just gonna let that person talk the point of the podcast is always geared toward like where did this leave us emotionally like what are we, what are we supposed to do with this information at this point point? and so just mm-hmm. making sure in, in, information's right but letting like kind of bouncing that off of that that person but at the same time a lot of people i always get the talk back from our community in a particular group where they say I'm tuned in for you guys. I don't want to listen to somebody else. So is that just like a 50, 50 split or is that something that you've tried to avoid or is it just too much work? Like you were saying, Piscatella, like you, you just, you know, dropped out of contact. Yeah. Um, it's weird, man. You know, I'm, maybe it's like my anti so anti socialness, right? Where I just like, where I just like, don't want to ask people onto the podcast. Right. Um, when, but, I, when I did GT live, that was definitely like a, a hurdle that I was like, this is going to yeah. suck, you know, just like every week I'd have to be like, can you be, oh, you can. Great. Oh, thank you so much. You know, and it's just like, it sucked every time, you know, mm-hmm. oh, you're busy. Okay. I understand. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> it's like, um, so again, I don't want to do it like a ton, but I'm just thinking like, that's a just different way. I oh, think those are fun. A, that podcast yeah. feels different, you know, mm-hmm. and, and not in a way of like, whoa, Jones is trying. Okay. Jones, you're trying too hard. Trying. That's what I want to avoid. God, at all costs. Yeah. You know, I just don't no trying have, too hard. There will definitely be effort. I will definitely try to make it like a good, but I don't want to have that like, <laughs> you know, energy of just like, I hope you guys liked the podcast, you know, Garth after like when yeah. he leaves. <laughs> That's the hard thing is also Bloodworth is going to have to learn how to rag on you. 
Oh yeah, it's it's like a, it's like an old myth. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bloodworth is going to have to learn yeah. how to yeah soften up that leather. Like imagine <laughs> Bloodworth shaking his head and saying, "Jones, you're trying too hard right now." Like imagine how fun that would be. Yeah, this is gonna we'll be teach a, him. it's gonna be a test for everybody. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I just picture you as we're laughing and the bits, ha ha, laughing. Like you're just like in your car, just listening. Like, mm, okay, yeah, That's interesting. Oh, they changed the. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Mm. It's not what I would have done. That's okay. Yeah. It's gonna be like the. It's gonna be like Allies Assemble. It's gonna be the same video. You're gonna be listening to the bets. And you're gonna be like, I, my bet's forty two. You know. <laughs> no. What do you mean, Allies Assemble? I'm the one who's in the, the garbage. I know. I'm that. You're gonna be. You're gonna be me with the trailers. You know. I got have to make you. a call to Bloodworth. Yes, I would be, be you. I would be you. Got yeah. you. Got you. Got you. Yeah. yeah. I got nothing else, Kyle. Those are that's your only questions for me. I got six questions, yeah. Okay. And then I had all those bits that I wrote down and all the stuff. Sure. That I'm gonna bring all the ideas that I have, my mission yeah. statement. I'm glad, Jones. I'm glad you you got a plan, and that, that's what mm. as a viewer slash listener, that's what I would want to know. I'd want to be sure that like this guy's not just flying in. And there's nothing. Nilly. There's nothing I've done at Easy Allies that hasn't been hasn't worked. At, you know, like I come in with. 80 to 90 percent of the idea of how it's going to go and then that last you know 10 yards i i you know finagle with the community you know i get feedback from people and again that sounds like kind of the point like of the whole of the whole podcast so a lot of things now i might be totally naive in suggesting and then i get actually get into the episode i'm like ha, never mind but it's nice because I, I can also avoid a lot of that stuff i don't know if you felt you kind of had to air dirty laundry or you had to like talk about I mean, sometimes it was fun when you were just like, and we had a lot of comments from these people about this and to those people, blah, blah, blah. But like, if you're like, I don't have another avenue, maybe my Friday night group stream to talk about like, this has come up a lot in the podcast and I don't know what to do about it or I need some advice. And so it's actually going to be nice to have Cup of Jones and have people being like, I didn't feel like throwing this into love and respect, but I figured we could talk about it now because mm-hmm. you did this last week or I thought this worked or maybe here's this is an idea you can do for the podcast. Um, and it makes sense it kind of that's my work week you know my work week is starts monday morning i do cup of jones Mm -hmm. and then i spend the entire week gathering all those news headlines and then i record a podcast cut it and then friday i post the podcast i'm out you know and if if you got a review for me to cut if you got vo for me to do whatever cool but i'm getting ready for cup of jones on monday to start another week and uh those two things bookend it um and so you know hopefully it does make sense that i host the thing but uh you were just really good at it yeah well that's what that's what i think is cool is like there are plenty of places where the podcast could be better and you're focusing on those you know what i mean and that's what i like that's what i like is just like at least at least it's different and better in these ways yeah and i I think uh, i think it's a it's a opportunity that i have that you didn't i don't think because you and this is actually another interesting question like what how did you host GT time? How did that get thrown at you? Did you just, was that like, I volunteer as tribute? Like Hunger I wanted Games, it. Or would you, you wanted it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so th- Ryan I mean, wanted, th- thank you. I didn't, you know, like I, I don't know if I was ever offered to me or something like even like back in the day when John Slusser was planning like GT weekly and stuff. And he's like, okay, a video game show. Give me ideas, Jones. And I was like, none, yeah. I'm out. I'm leaving the, I'm literally leaving the room. You, you should not do video game shows. Goodbye. (laughs) You should do reviews and retrospectives and maybe a feature every now and then. That's all I want to work on. I'll see you later. And so like GTTV, all that was out. I was, I have Mm -hmm. no idea. I literally have no ideas. Like I wouldn't watch this show. So I don't know how to create something that I wouldn't watch. You know, like I don't listen to a lot of gaming podcasts. And so it's just, I've, I've just kind of been like, Hmm, comics look so easy. And then here I go, you know, so, um, thank you for, yeah. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for for taking on that responsibility ever, you know, a long time ago. And so you took over something from a channel called Game Trailers. What the hell are we about? You know, like, and Mm -hmm. then you take over Easy Allies and here's this brand new group. Here's the first piece of content other than the intro video we've made for Patreon. Go, Kyle. And you have to kind of sum up like what Easy Allies means and what you're going to do, what parts of GT time you're going to do and what new things you're going to do. And so I've now had four years to like see the podcast, understand who we are, how we function on this podcast and in your absence, what the show will likely be like. And so then when I was thinking of that mission statement, it's kind of like, okay, I I want it to seem like a bunch of people really trying their hardest to figure out. One thing that I want to, I want to let a lot of stuff happen on the podcast, but I don't want anybody to not, not necessarily just not be interested. Like I know sometimes you say you like throw topics at people and you just don't get a response or something you can do about that. But like, 
I'm not afraid to come after people that somebody's just like, hmm. I'm like, hmm, Brad, is that it? This is important. You know, like mm-hmm. we should have an opinion about this. You know, like sometimes I felt bad on the podcast. I could feel the, you know, the, the energy kind of dipping and I'm just like, oh man, what is it because we don't have the information? Is it because we didn't have enough time to think about it? You know, how can we, because yeah, that can potentially be seen as like, we don't, you know, no ill will towards the people that are listening to this podcast that are fans of like Destiny 2. And they're like, that's it. That's all you have to say. And we're like, we, we don't, you know, it's Huber and he's not here. You know, like we don't have a lot, you know, I want to try to avoid those. I want to try to at least be prepared for them and just be like, hey, just to let you know, we're not experts on this, but we're trying to figure it out. Blood, what do you got? You know, or like, Ian, you played this earlier today, you know, Manscaped. How are your balls, Ian? You know what I mean? That kind of synergy. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what we're, that's what we're looking for. How egg-like are they exactly? Yeah, what's the egg count? <laughs> cool. All right. Jones, uh, I feel I feel at ease personally, and I bet the audience does too. Well, I mean, here's one way we can we can pass the torch. We don't mm-hmm. have a torch in these Yaws podcasts, but we got this guy. Shall I? Pull the trigger, baby. He's on a really good mic now, too. I do have the good mic. We'll mm-hmm. get back to we'll get back to the good mics when we get back in the studio. But until then, you got this big new mic. Go for it, buddy. Love, Love and respect. respect. I'm so nervous, man. I'm so nervous. He's just going to stop playing someday, and I'm not going to know. I'm going to try to put the They sent us in. a thousand batteries for that bad boy. They sent us a thousand Rufuses. We used to have like eight. Yeah. Where did they go? They're, they're somewhere. They're somewhere. Here's the, that Rufus is eternal. There will Kyle, always be a way to fix the This might be the last chance I'll ever have to break your balls. What the hell did you do with these Rufuses, man? I think I just you stashed just them someplace in your garage, dude. You dropped the ball, dude. You dropped the ball. <laughs> Sometime in 2000. 28 I'm gonna get so yeah a, a box and Kyle's gonna be like found him like, to explain to our audience what that's about is Rufus started dying on the podcast you could hear him slow down week by week and then one week he was just gone and then our audience is so nice too many people sent us replacement Rufuses <laughs> and tools even to me, help the Rufus even me being concerned about this right now I'm, I'm probably yeah. just baiting I haven't yep. been able to go to our PO box in a week but they're probably already there waiting for me mm-hmm um, so, uh, yeah, we just had too many and it's yeah. just like, I, I don't need those in my house. So I think I stashed but, them somewhere in Jones's good garage. Job, good job. Yeah. He did a great job. Um, okay. Quick one. Sup allies. Will Jones do a rap ever? Let me respect Matt Curran, like, AKA Hikari W. It's gotta be something else. It's gotta be editing focused because I'm not as musical as you are. I know mm-hmm. I've been in music halls, but I don't... Re- oh, I have to do a rap. Is that the Episode answer? 300, you have to do a rap. You have to pretend you're not going to do a rap and then you do a rap. Well, I can't. You can do a song, actually. That'd be super good, too. If you do a... Song. I'll do, like, editing bits. That's the thing I was thinking about. It's like, oh, I Don't can, tell me I you're not musical. What, what do you mean you're not musical? I, you could hand me a piece of music, and I could sing that music. I could goof off and sing, but, but like, I don't, it's just not... Again, it's... Uh, if, it's what, if, if it's what must be, then yes. who am I to say? Yeah, you get, it's like, not 90... Stre- it's not it's 90 episodes for you to learn to, like, accept this. It's not a strength, but all right. It's not a strength for me. It's not, They're not good songs, but it's it, just it, like, oh... Kyle, it is. Kyle... Kyle, okay, we get it. Mm-hmm. It's love and respect now, man. We only got so sure. many minutes left. We're an hour and a half into this, okay? Yeah, absolutely. You want, yeah. Do we want to get emotional, Kyle? Huh, Kyle? No. No. I live in Los Angeles, okay? I went mm-hmm. to four years doing tons of theater at a school. I went to college for four years doing theater and doing film school at the same time. I actually graduated as a film student. Stayed on for a whole extra semester where I did another musical, took a bunch of extra classes, uh, and then I've been I've been in this industry for like almost like a decade and a half, man. I have seen so much bad stuff. I've seen so many. I really try to be the nice guy. So I'm not going to like point at people or pick names or something like that. I don't like to tear people down. We've all been there, though. We've been to a show. And it's like, but it's the yeah. whole process of, of figuring out how much, okay, you produce that piece of art and you put that much effort into it. And then I have this much time to put this much effort. And I think it turned out this way compared to the thing that you did. But then you're over here and you're my idol and you're making so much money and you have so many followers. I don't know how the hell you do you know, Anthony Carboni, <laughs> just whoever, just somebody that just Greg Miller, just somebody you're just like, wow, okay, I'm never going to get there, but at least I can learn from you. But mm-hmm. I think I'm on above this thing over here. <laughs> and you, you, you got the genuine article, man. That's why when you first called me in January and you were like, yeah, I'm losing the allies. I was like, ah, da, da, we almost, yeah, <laughs> I knew <laughs> it. Like I knew, you yeah. know, yeah, I knew it was going to happen because you got, um, you got it, son. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but you got it. Uh, and um, whether that's suited for games journalism, I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It has its we'll limitations. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that your your songs are funny, man. Like there's a I've done stuff like that before. I've 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 dabbled, and um, it's uh, 
I mean, it gets, you know, like for one thing, when we talk about raps, mm -hmm. uh, a beat goes a long way, a really good beat. And you just, you, you just put, it's, it's like I hear one of your songs, I'm like, God, it's a good song. And then I listen to it later, and it's like, okay, I, I see what he did. There's not that many layers to it. But exactly, that, yeah. But that first layer, that first, you know, that first, like, mm, it's good stuff. Okay. I'm positive our audience will help you out. I'm positive Ian will help you out. I just think it'd be pretty special if in episode 300, you pretend, basically, that's what I would always do. I would, I would plant to love and respect. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody's like, no way, dude, I'm not doing a song. And you're like, fine, I'll do a song. Like, just think about but you how huge. But you wouldn't rap on camera. You'd do the rap recording, mm -hmm. and then you would just think, you'd just be yeah. thinking about it. So I could, I could get away with that. Even though, because again, you'd, I do skimble shanks, and then you say, okay, <laughs> you did the skimble shanks, now do a rap. And it's like, this is too different. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm sorry. I don't want to, I don't mean to bring race into it, okay? I don't mean to be that guy. Mm -hmm. But I'm a white male, and I'm, I'm absolutely terrified. <laughs> just, no, that's fair. Brandon it's Jones is going to rap is not the headline I want preceding anything I do. So this is it is tricky because a lot of people think that like oh it's funny that I'm a white person and I'm rapping that is no, the I, humor would not, that would not be my angle it would probably be very techno it probably be yeah. very be, it'd be pretty hard cool again there would yeah. be a lot of swearing because it's just not my bag but I think as long as it's sincere yeah yes that's that's okay. what makes it work if the if the comedy is coming from a sincere place and not just like a look what I'm doing and that's the part that's uh, hey it's just sucks. like some it's just like someday I might want to grow a beard. You know, mm -hmm. and I just I, yeah. I sit and wonder like what would my what would, what would I look like with a beard? This kind of like yeah. what would I what would it be like if I rapped? Very mustache heavy. Um, and for for the record, I'm 41 years of age, never rapped, never. Well, I might have written like poems that were rapish. Yeah, but I've never I've never performed in front of more than one person. Something I, I, I had to do rap. a I had to do a rap in one of those high school musicals that I was too cool for. Um, it really affected my entire career projection uh trajectory i mean yeah. in that i learned that like hey don't do stuff you don't want to do <laughs> wait a minute i don't want to host this podcast <laughs> <laughs> like don't just don't just don't do stuff you want to do um yeah 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 that, that can be that can be miserable and the, yeah we had to perform it for a huge crowd it's like man you know what never again um jonesy uh, one of the tips that actually went over, like skipped over, is always make your panel look good. Find ways to make your panel look good. Prop mm. them up. I'm, I got a game for you to play. Make them feel good about themselves. Oh, is this we're yeah. on to the next love and respect? Okay. Yeah, I got a game that we're gonna play. It's gonna make you feel good. It's gonna make you feel good. It's gonna make you look great. I think you're gonna nail every single one of these. This comes from Yum Yum Go. Sean from Yum Yum Go gives us a game called Disney Animated Character or Animal Crossing Villager. Okay. It's so we just, have two, we have 20 just, of these. Just okay, it's just a first name. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you got okay. this. All right, okay. Yeah, we got Flora. <laughs> um uh I'm trying to think it I don't know. That's a Animal Crossing. That's a Disney character. That's that, Sleeping Beauty. Is that one of the three? Well, there's Flora and Fauna and Meriwether. That's what it is. Okay, cuz I, I was thought that there's three of them and I was like there th can't be Flora and Fauna, but Meriwether's the third one, right? I think it's very Mary Weather's the third one. Yep. Okay. I I know you're gonna get the rest of these nineteen. I thought I had yeah, never <laughs> never never bet on me and Disney. That's that's the tricky part is there's like so many Disney's so huge. There's so oh, many yeah. Disney XD, all the, the teen shows, like There's no teen shows or X D in this okay. list. You're yeah. safe from those. Okay. Wart one. Jr. Wart Jr. Mm-hmm. I think the junior would be mostly Disney. I don't think that would be an. I don't think a junior. So would that's be Animal Disney. Crossing. That's Animal Crossing. The next I know 18, you're, though, you're gonna get the next it. eighteen. Here we go. Agent S. Uh, is that from Disney? That's Animal Crossing. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know that because that, that seems you know like an Incredibles you know character. Yeah, or something. yeah, I know. Yeah. So he's in the credits. So like, all right. I feel like that was a tricky one. I do feel like that was a tricky one. They're all Todd. Todd with one D. Todd. Todd with one D. Well, we've mm -hmm. had a lot of Animal Crossing. I don't recognize it from. I don't recognize it from Disney, but maybe we'll go Disney. It's Disney. It's Fox and the Hound. I have not seen Fox and the Hound. I don't think. If I have oh, seen it okay. once, it's, if I have seen it, it was only once. Uh, nibs, N I B S. Nibs. <laughs> these are deep. These are deep cuts. I knew. I thought you would know this one for sure. Nibs. You seem like this kind of guy who knows who Nibs is. 
Oh, so then that would probably be Disney. I don't recognize an animal. It's, it's Peter Pan. Oh, is he one of the Lost Boys, Nibs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's probably one of the Lost Boys. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sykes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sykes. S y k e s. Sykes. Animal Crossing. Mm-mm. One of my favorite Disney movies. One of my top Sykes. six. One of my top six Disney movies, animated movies. Oliver and Company. Big Hero Six. Oh, nice. Yeah. Again, once I know the soundtrack. Oh, why should I worry? Yeah, yeah, it's a good soundtrack. Um, Hopkins. By the uh, way, I did I did randomize these. Oh, you got this okay. one. Hopkins is in my town. Yeah, the nice. Hopkins is Animal Crossing. Is that a rabbit? It is a rabbit. He's a rabbit, like an inflatable rabbit. He's one of those. Get, he's got the thing on the back of his head that looks like he's like oh. a pool toy or something. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Lampwick. Lampwick is. I mean, Lampwick. Something. Yeah, that's a Disney character. I'm just trying to remember what. What is Lampwick from? 101 Dalmatians? What is Lampwick from? Lamp- what? Oh, okay. Yeah, of course, Lampwick. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, Lampwick turns into the donkey on uh, on tre- tre- Pleasure Island. Pleasure nice. Island. Nice. In? Pinocchio. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Lampwick, great name. Um, I think it says... Pinocchio's my favorite Disney film, so that hurt if I wasn't going to get that one. Mitizi. Mitizi? Mm-hmm. M-I-T-I-Z-I. Mitizi. Disney. Animal Crossing. <laughs> Cube. C U B E Cube. It's like a Wreck It Ralph character. Disney? Animal Crossing. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the thing. If it's just an obscure Animal Crossing character I don't know, I'm probably going to guess Disney every time because I'm not going to be like, uh, that sounds. It could be both. But again, this game is harder than it. I, I thought this game was going to be super easy. Powerline. Powerline? Uh probably disney where, where is, is powerline Incred- from incredibles what song does he sing what song does power what Line song sing? does powerline sing kyle getting upset about a song in a disney film it's fun to watch he's a he's a pop star powerline is the biggest pop star powerline he has a yellow jumpsuit dude and a cool hairdo for the first time ever, we're seeing it eye to eye. I have no idea, Kyle. A Goofy movie. Yeah, that Goofy movie. Yeah, that's another one I don't think I've seen all the way through. I think I've seen, like, patches of it. <laughs> I'm not scared. I will not say a thing bad about Goofy movie. Goofy movie's wonderful. <laughs> Just it's not... It's not in my area of... What area of what? God, we could play this all day. You didn't watch my favorite Disney thing. It's like I, I, I don't have any energy to play that game. You know, like for Brad, it was for Brad's Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks came prime up the other day, and he Brad got all yeah. excited. You know, yeah. it's like mm-hmm. if I bring up Sleeping Beauty, and like Huber was like, oh, I haven't seen Sleeping Beauty. I would be like, what Huber? And be like, fine, it doesn't matter. You know, you all. Okay, you all here's what I'll tell you, Jones. Here's what I'll tell you. Here's all of the company's you. my favorite. I bet you cash money. You haven't seen Aladdin as many times as I have. I bet. It. Just it, it's it's the fact. Sure, There's I've seen no Aladdin. Way. Yeah, yeah. Really? You've only seen it a couple times, but it's so good. At least I've seen it all the way through. You got me there. I might have seen Goofy movie all the way through. I just don't. You would have known. It's you know, like you would have. Thing. You would have been singing that song with me if you watched it the whole way through. Sure, it's fair. Top ten musical <laughs> conclusions in movies. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Soft. There's our, our new opening bit. <sighs> I'm so grateful for this one. Cronk. Cronk. <laughs> Kronk's from uh, um, Emperor's New Groove, right? Yes. No. Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Yeah. John Jitters. Goodman, right? No, it's um the guy from uh, uh, Seinfeld. You know, is is uh, Brad does an impression of him. Oh, that's right. He like uh, no, it's more like H. John Benjamin. What does that guy sound like? Uh, mm, whatever. Just listen to Brad do it. Jitters Are you thinking of his Disney. name? No. Jitters oh, Jitters. Disney, Disney character. It's Animal Crossing. It's Animal Crossing. Yeah. You know what I was thinking Jitters might be is the, I can't remember the um, Princess and the Frog. They have this this kind of spastic uh, firefly. And I was like, ah, that guy might have been Jitters. I can't remember his name. You know what? If you told me that guy's name is Jitters, I would hey, believe you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Stitches. Last one. Stitches. Stitches is a, an infamous Animal Crossing character. Um, Why? Who is that? Uh, Stitches is like a creepy looking teddy bear with like no eyes. And it's like the eyes are crossed out. And 
Cool. Yeah. I want that one. Creepy. It's what, if you want to have like your own Halloween town, there's definitely there's like the 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 mummy dog, and there's like it's like technically a dog that's just in bandages. I think his name's Lucky, but it's just like no, no, he's the mummy dog. You know, you can definitely uh, have like the creepy villagers. Jones, I moved on to the next page. There are actually six more. Uh, Cogsworth. <laughs> oh, come on, Beauty and the Beast. I'm nice. always, I shouldn't say come on. I could probably. Yeah, no, it's a sub. But Marina. Marina. Hmm. It could be a it could be one of Ariel's sisters, but I'll go with the Animal Crossing character. Nice. Bonsai. Nice. Yep, it's Animal Crossing. Bonsai. Bonsai seems racist. I'm gonna go with Animal Crossing character. With an Animal Crossing character, it's not as racist as it is with the Disney film. Disney film, I think you 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 quadruple the chance of Hi I'm Bonsai. Depends on when it got made. If it was made in the sixties or something, you're like, all right. It's like Harlem Dalmatians or something. Or, Bonsai is from The Lion King. <laughs> His little name is Bonsai. Somebody's somebody's named Bonsai in The Lion King. Oh, I wonder if he's one of the uh, hyenas. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Maybe he's one of the hyenas. Then okay, never mind. Gonzo. I mean, Gonzo's, don't do Muppets. Not the Muppet. Not he's the Muppet. A Disney. It's a Disney character. Yeah. Not really animated though, I guess. Right. Uh, I'd be surprised. No, I'll go with Animal Crossing. I've, I've never known that's an Animal Crossing. Crossing. Yeah, I cool. gotta find a Gonzo. I really do. I didn't know you could live with Gonzo in Animal Crossing. T-Bone. Is that another Oliver and Company? Uh, T-Bone <laughs> crossing. T-Bone sounds like a villager. Or uh, it sounds like he works there. T-Bone he's sounds a like... T-Bone sounds like he'll come by on a motorcycle and sell some stuff. Like, meaning he's, My like, God. he's on staff. Yeah. Um, I also... Another good hot tip, Bossman, not yeah. to tell people they're going to do a great job at games. I, I, like, I, I got a game here. You're going to love it. You know, it's I like thought, that means they're going to get half of it wrong. Yeah, I messed up, dude. I really thought you were going to crush this last one. Pietro. Pietro. Mm hmm. That wait. Mm, Disney movie. Animal Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> really? He's not the guy next to what's his name and cars. The other Italian getting there. Yeah. No, not him. He's not the he's not the oh, chef in cool. Little Mermaid. Because it's close to Petro. Yeah, I can see where you'd think that would be a car. I hear that. I hear that. Mm -mm. Not that though. Whenever somebody breaks out like Disney a trivial pursuit, Disney a Disney trivial pursuit, I'm like, no, I no. Because again, it's gonna be like in this scene, well, how many ca carrots were on? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. Disney right. Disney's a vibe, and I dig it, but I'm not. I have not been taking notes. <laughs> Sorry. Jones, here is a question I know for sure you will know the answer to. All right. Here's a love and respect. I'm making you look good. I know you know this one. Okay. Uh, I'm stuck at the final boss of Werehog Madness. Should I try to play music to soothe the savage beast or keep throwing shoes at it and hope for a critical? Is there another move I'm missing? Thanks, Chase. Uh, yeah, you have to. You got to remember the sock meta because it's not only just the shoes. Sometimes you can take your shoes off. Sometimes you can take your shoes off and the sock off at the same time. And so the socks add different bonuses. It depends on your party composition. So you have mm -hmm. to you have to realize there's probably charts you could look it up. Again, this is the difference of the podcast. I would see if I could link something like this or put it like in the lower third. But um, if you go to Game Facts, they'll probably just have a guide about socks and shoes. So different so. socks work differently with different shoes. Yeah, it's just like sometimes if you throw some shoes at it without socks in it, then it's just like it's like a brick wall. And nothing's happening. Got it. Yeah. Okay. But Jones, you run out, you run out your inventory, and then and it's tough because it's a boss fight, so you got to know what you're bringing in before you even start the fight. Mm -hmm. I knew you would know this one. I knew it. I'm glad that we were able to like, throw you a softball, man. Um, let me do, let's do like a, let's do one that's actually like kind of news oriented. Let's do like some real podcasting for a second. Recently, a rumor came out that the next Resident Evil game to be remade will be RE4 and will re release in 2022. While the first three original RE entries received positive reception, RE4 took that a step further and is generally considered to be one of the greatest games of all time. Can an RE4 remake live up to the lofty expectations of the previous RE remakes given its legacy and difference in playstyle? Also, can it be achieved with a 2022 release date? Thank you, and good luck in the future, Kyle. Run fire. Sure. Not to not to downplay the achievements of Resident Evil 2 and 3, but these games seem they were made quickly. <laughs> these don't seem like, you know, especially playing something like 7 Remake now. You're like, oh, okay, I get why this took a little bit. You see, like, <laughs> some of the, the, the environments and visuals of RE7 Remake, and, like, RE2's fantastic, but it, it, these are 
confined environments you know these are especially play i've played re3 now like eight times it's like okay this is this game is very short there's not a lot going on now if i could just like memorize literally every single moment of this game wait how many times have you actually played through that game i'm curious eight i think oh so when you say like eight you mean yeah i think eight about eight because it's like an hour at the eventually it's like an hour when especially when you get the grenade launcher you're just well you know then what are you doing at that point to breeze through it you know getting the different you know unlocking different things and Sure, the, sure, uh, sure, sure. It was fun, like getting that, you know, the rocket launcher and then going through uh, um, nightmare. It's like nightmare mode. Like, OK, Just bomb, 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 bomb. I didn't even bring it. I didn't even have the uh, unlimited machine gun by that point. I was just like, what What for? <laughs> like, what do, do I- you have infinite ammo on the rocket launcher? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's so much Every time he pops out, you just sit down. Um, yeah, but what do you even like? What do you think RE4 Remake looks like, though? I think the big thing that RE4 Remake can do compared to these new ones is the seamlessness. Again, like you don't have loading over a lot of these places. So it's just like all the doors that I'm going to, I'm still going through it. And one thing, it's, it's really interesting, the comparison between RE2 and RE3. Because RE2, I loved playing again multiple times, but RE3 is like really built for that. And so they know, yeah, a lot of the puzzles... We're get, we got to build it in a way that's tricky the first time you do it, but then the second time you do it and every time after that, you can just run it where it's like mm-hmm. not a question of like, we well, split this way and then you go do all the stuff and then you got to walk all the way back to the middle point and then all the way over to the left. It's like, it's just a loop. It's it, But you can't tell that when you first go in. A great point is like the bug part of RE3 where you're going through and it's all red and dark and you have to like do the power stations. Like once you get it, the uh, hospital too. Like the fourth or fifth time I played through with Carlos, I was like, oh, I can just jump out the wind. Oh, man, that saves me 20 minutes. You know, and just like I get it. I see how they set it up. And it's kind of fun, especially in a survival game, to just to feel that, you know, leveling up. So by the fourth or fifth time you run in, it's like this is still exhilarating. It's still scary. You know, it's still fun, especially nightmare mode, like changed up however where everything was. And so if you can, you know, finesse four to just be like. Because I don't think, I guess speed running was a thing, I guess, in those older games. But like with 4, I could not stop playing 4. I think the first time 4 came out, I played like five times. I was just like, ah. Let me ask you a question. Just, Let me yeah. ask you a few questions about 4. Ugh. Should it have quick time of smashing button events? Totally. Yeah, they should go nuts. With in the remake, stuff. they should keep that going? I think so, yeah. Okay. Should it have Salazar with a giant a statue uh, robot? Yes. Oh my God, yes. Dude, I think... Uh, because that's the thing is like you're it's like what are we remaking here mm-hmm. and it's like with the end of three that's actually one of the things that really emotionally affected me about four story wise is there was a couple things there was like and this happened anyway and I was like wait what yeah the Huber too four, he's still mad about it yeah at the, at the beginning of four they were just like anyway so Umbrella's gone and now we move mm-hmm. you're like wait how what huh yeah. and you're like well I, I know Umbrella Chronicles happened and I've seen some other cutscenes and stuff but like how, oh okay I guess we're done and so it was really like we're moving past that where you need to make other games. There's only how, however evil we can make this big corporation. And so it'll be interesting to see if a remake is like, no, this was the bonkers one. This is where it start getting, you know, like we're going to have Leon backflip over way more stuff. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it's just that moment when you walk in, he falls and just, well, and Batman's the little like grappling hook out and catches himself. And then it's just like, ha <laughs> suck it. Salazar. And he's like, damn it. Like, like that, you know, those little Batman moments. Like I love that. And yeah. uh, it'd be interesting. Maybe it's a difficulty thing. Maybe like they're just cutscenes and the earlier difficulties. But then if you like jump up to the a one harder than normal, like that's when all the quick time nonsense starts to pop up or do you think, uh, you think Leon will have cheese ball one liners? I hope so. Yeah. Oh, okay. I kind of, I kind of do too, dude. I think it's part I of the appeal never... of that game. I, again, I don't, I'm only saying this because it came up with the love and respect question. I'm not going to dig too much on it, but like, I do think having played RE2 and RE3, God love Huber, but in the review, Huber was like the bonds between, you know, uh, you know, like between Jill and Carlos. It's like, there's no bond. <laughs> like, these are not good scripts. So a like, bit they don't, a little bit, but it, <laughs> you know, it's just, I don't, you know, like I see like Ada and Leon like with RE2, I was like, here we go. And then I'm like, all right, that was a missed opportunity anyway. Like, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess, like, sorry, I just got too much into it, but I see moments where they were the little girl and the guy's trying to find you with the flashlight i was like here we go like this is creepy this is cool this is oh yeah yeah and especially seven was terrifying like i went into two after playing seven like holy shit here we go and it was like oh this is kind of campy and silly uh, okay we're back i got it mm-hmm. sorry you know and so if uh, four was like uh, nothing of four i cared about none of it I, there was never a moment in four where i was like actually wrapped 
It's like, I'm terrified being in the shack just because of where these windows are placed and how many, you know, green herbs I have. And oh, they just keep coming. And it was so much fun gameplay wise. But like, I didn't care about a lick of, you know, rescuing the president's daughter or whatever. The guy who shows up. Hey, I've just been running around the castle. And you're like, who are, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, and all the super, you know, cartoony villains. And so it's like, please, just more of that. Just make it like a Scooby-Doo episode. Just make it nuts. And I agree. And, I think they can get it done by 2022. It's just Leon's wild adventure. You know, yeah. it's just like. They all meet at a bar later, and Leon's like, yeah, I just got back from Europe. It's like, I guess it's supposed to be Spain, but it just says Europe at the beginning. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, how was Europe? He's like, don't even, you know. Yeah. They can make it uh, a little Devil May Cry. I, I agree. I, I think it still, it, like, Devil May Cry 5 works in the same engine, and they're still as goofy as they want to be in Devil May Cry 5. You don't have to go that crazy, but it, it's just they it's made, provably working. They made RE2. When they remade RE1 on GameCube, they remade it as RE1, but they basically took RE2 and RE3 and made them RE4. So mm-hmm. if you're going to redo RE4, just crank it ramp it up yeah it is it it's going to be hard to make ashley work for sure sure it is going to be hard to make it, her fun. any any decision i can't imagine them being like they ruined the sanctity of that moment in re4 it's like what moment you know like, yeah you're the right. helicopter guy like <laughs> <laughs> who are we really you know mm-hmm. but you know you i think in uh to what two and three didn't necessarily have as much as one did when they did that remake because some of those moments were so iconic and you were just like and this thing happens and like four has a lot of that too like it'd be fun to like they get to the lake and you're like oh in the remake and you go down and you're like ah, like the, the lake it's like nothing happens. You're like, oh, and it's like, no, it happens later. You know, like, yeah. oh, OK. And just have like, it's like, oh, there's oh, here comes the dog with the trap. Oh, no dog. You know, and like those fun waves are like, oh, it's coming up later. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like you get boulders to fall on El Gigante, right? Like, yeah. it'd be cool if he just knocks the boulders aside. It's like, you can't beat me that this if way. that you know, fight just like, <laughs> just like, because again, it'd be fun to unlock chapters and stuff where it's yeah. just like after you beat the game a certain many times or something, it's like you could just do that Gigante fight and that fight. You know, you, the streamers just like, I'm just going to fight this guy for two hours because he might grab a log and that changes the whole dynamic of the fight or the, the, the whole place might light on fire. That totally changes it. Yeah. There's kind of like in F, uh, FF7 of you, uh, you know, dismantling that one robot and you could slowly take the different things away from it and then like get that item, those items later. There's ways that you can like piss him off more and make the fight harder, you know, or like, you know, if you get him angry while he's going, that's one thing and he hulks out or like. Yeah, that fight is, yeah, that fight has yeah. to be a tent pole. It's got to be huge. It's just, it's a set piece game. It's not like a pivotal chapter of the story. It's just a damn good game. And it mm-hmm. felt so good. It just was so fluid, just snapping around and being trapped. Like, I really miss that. Like, I really miss, like, RE4 didn't scare me in the same way as RE3, or 2 and 3 did. Like, I just remember, like, one of those terif- in any Resident Evil game, I remember one of the most terrifying moments was I was covering Ashley with a sniper rifle when you're trapped and she's up on the second level and that, like, and it's just, the, you know, like, oh, man. and all like the priest guys are like walking around and some guy snuck up on me and I didn't even know he was there because he wasn't screaming or anything. Mm-hmm. And I just pulled out of the, the perspective of the sniper rifle and just turned and he was right there, right in front of my face, just smiling and his lips were all red and his eyes were bloodshot. And like, yeah, so there's there's ways you can make that game scary, startling. You, you know, said pounding. You said nothing is sacred. And for the most part, I agree. But if they somehow like make the merchant just like an app on your phone, <laughs> I would be mad. Sure. If you like pull it out, like, what are you buying? It's like if they, if they do something like that, I would actually be upset. If they recast him, people will be upset. He's like, <laughs> what are you buying? And you're like, what the hell? Ha- you had one job. <laughs> what are you? Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, we talked earlier about how hard it is to uh, dump LNRs. We're here. We're here at the end of the podcast. I had to dump some very thoughtful ones, some ones that were just like, hey, man, it's my first time writing in. Just want to say I appreciate you very much. So I just want to say I read all of those. I appreciate those comments uh, to the people who say like, hey, man, you're an inspiration. Thank you uh, to the people who are just like, hey, man, I just had a good time in a couple of podcasts. Most of them were bad. I appreciate that, too. If, if a couple of them were good. Thank you. Um, not going to I don't have like a thing to promote. Uh, it's unknown. I'm moving on to a great unknown. Um, but Kyle Bossman on Twitter, youtube.com slash Kyle Bossman, twitch.tv slash Kyle Bossman. Ooh. Those are, I got those already. I've had, I've had those. I've no, had I those. Know. I just, I'm ex- it's exciting to hear you say it, man. Oh, that I might. Well, yeah, I, that's I'll- the thing is I can't say I'm going to put a, a video on my YouTube channel, but <laughs> if I did, that's, that's where that's you where would find it. Yeah. Yeah. It's that or nothing. <laughs> Every day we just can we get up and we check any anything did he no yeah. no okay but like don't huh? follow don't follow some other don't follow any that's not, that's all I got man if there's an if there's a Kyle Bossman on Instagram not me that's not me 
Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally, if I'm doing a next thing, I'll put it on. I'll tweet about it. I've promised everybody that, right? Like, a lot of people just want to make sure that I don't just, like, keep what I'm doing next a secret. You know? And I, and I, I appreciate that. I understand that. And I believe that I owe you that much is to at least, like, tell you whatever I'm doing next, what I'm doing next. All right. And also, Jonesy, I, like, already miss streaming. So, like, I'm probably going to do civilian streams. Yeah, and we'll, we'll Before host lockdown that. is over, you know? Yeah, we'll host the shit out of that. We'll talk about yeah. all the stuff that you're doing. And, yeah. Because, yeah. like, dude... It's just me in this apartment. <laughs> it is nuts. <laughs> and like streaming's nice, you know what I mean? It's just a nice way to interact with your audience directly and they like care about you and they ask you questions. It's just a nice thing. Uh, it's, yeah, it's it's been a change this pandemic, but it is interesting like having this just kind of be the cornerstone of my of my work. Yeah. You know. I mean, how be, much do you be this connected? I'm, I'm much, doing I'm, I have a lot more fun stream ideas. I'm going to be streaming something different this uh, Saturday too. Ooh, can you tease that? Boot Hill Bounties. Boot yeah, Hill exactly. Bounties. Boot Hill Bounties. I don't know it what this is. It is a Western turn-based JRPG uh, a la Earthbound, set in the Old West. And like you're a, streaming this? Like a goofy turn-based. It's on Switch. It's out. You can go get it. Yeah, I'm streaming that on Saturday. I've had it for a while. I just I watched the trailer. It. I watched the trailer. This game looks expansive. You can do tons of things. Really? Okay, crazy. I have not touched it. I'm going to cra- I'm gonna crack open my save file on Saturday. I think that's going to be a fun stream. Okay, but, that's cool. But it's fun. I've had a lot more like solo stream ideas and stuff. And, and you going away. Uh, I, 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 today I did Animal Crossing in our Dreams Lovers time slot. But I might have to maybe we'll record the podcast then and I'll stream on like Saturdays or something. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I mean like even the Animal Crossing thing I think is like a really cool direct way for you to interact with the audience and community. Mm-hmm. And appreciate the stuff they do and they appreciate you. It's cool. Just in terms of like lockdown, it's a really good way to st- feel connected still while you're in your own little igloo. Have we already begun the ending of the show? Because I got to do shout outs. Yeah, this is the beginning of the ending. Okay. You usually do shout outs for the beginning of the ending. I think the shout outs are very, very last. And then, you know, we do like trademark sign off and all that. Yeah, I mean, like closing. The yeah. shout outs are before closing. Before closing uh, begins. The time code oh. closing is after shout outs. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. Yes. I feel like I've concluded my thoughts at least. Mm hmm. Great. Now we can do shout outs. Great. Who's first, you or me? What? When when we do shout out, who's oh, first? Oh, you you're me? first. You're first. Okay, yeah. Uh, there got we go. it. Okay, 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 okay. Shout out to Blue, Caleb Togi Crawford, L. Fanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, and Jesse Blue. Shout out. The best one we've ever done, probably. Mm-hmm. I'll listen to it after the fact, but... That bit's worth explaining, too, I feel. Do, maybe, actually, we probably did that mid-podcast. Oh, that was live. Yeah, nobody missed that. Sure, out of I think we, we reiterate how confused we are every time we do that. Great. Every time it like was the me, first time. It was me doing an impression of what I thought a radio host would sound like as he's doing shout-outs. And that's what'll be... That's tempting to do that stuff. It's just like, all right, that was corrections. Okay, moving on to the next segment, you know. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. I was, I, I did have aspirations like to be a DJ when I was a kid, you know, like I would, yeah. listen, I would listen to my favorite DJs and be like, man, they're so cool. Oh, and so you mean you want drops? Um, or just something. Yeah. Since I'm editing it, you know, you do the, yeah. you lock it in. I guess I'll have to lock it in. That's just kind of the way the bets are designed. You know, I have to get a whole nother, I don't know if we have the budget for that to get a whole containment set up. There could be bets. a different mechanic. Yeah. Like you, I mean, there's lots of ways to I, lock a, a thing in. In a week? I don't know. Maybe. Even it's just like a little beep, beep. A little twist, a little key. Oh, sure. You get the big strong thing and I get the beep beep. Is that how we yeah. do it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, who gets right in responsibilities? You get all the stuff. It's your last podcast, man. You get everything. Okay. All right. So we don't do Twitter anymore. We've already decided that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's out. Uh, uh, easy Eyes video I'd like to promote. Oh, I'm, um, I'm caught up on all my bets. I had a number of outstanding bets. Uh, this is cheating because it's three different videos, but uh, they were fun to do. They were fun to make. Um, what I do? Kingdom Hearts 3. This one was for you, Jonesy. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts 3 in the style of a Devil May Cry 5 cutscene. Um, had to do it with toys because I couldn't do it with live actors because, you know, lockdown. Uh, Hunting Huber. Uh, we did that in Halo 2 because, again, we couldn't do that in a park. Possibly with creating a new show. 
as one of your last acts at Easy Allies. That's all the comments, dude. It's Hunting like, Huber is so solid. <laughs> do, do more of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's fun edit. It's very snappy. It's cool. Uh, we only play for 10 minutes, and so it makes a nice little video. And uh, oh, a, a duet I did with Ben where we talk about Samus. A Sing about very, Samus. Very, very special duet. Yeah. Uh, final word. I definitely, I definitely, I definitely think... If I want to impart anything, it's like definitely make fun of everybody, you know, make fun of Damiani, make fun of Ben, make fun of Brad, make fun of Huber. Like we love each other. Right. Yeah. And we're like good with each other and, and we're happy go lucky. But I think that like without mocking each other, right. you there's like some level of bond that isn't reached. I honestly think like it's a test. Yeah, I it's do think like busting balls is part of uh of uh like being friends yeah busting eggs busting eggs oh there's one other word that i promised would be my last word fuck oh uh and now uh for my trademark sign off right uh it's actually jonesy i know so we did but we did best last lines you gotta tell i gotta write it down so make sure you get it right you know you can read it from slack i slacked it to you but i don't have slack up I'm recording, okay. I'm recording my All monitor. Right. I have to bring. So go ahead and write that down. Um, oh I'll no, explain. I can bring up Slack on my phone. You, okay, you, you, you did message to me on my phone. So for the last uh, four or five weeks, uh, I've been asking uh, people to send in uh, best last lines from video games, and it would be my last line uh, on this very podcast. But I feel like, look, let's not make the podcast about me, right? Jones is the host now, so Jones will actually do the last line of my final podcast because he is now officially the host of the easy eyes podcast. Uh, since you're actually giving me the chance to say this, to sign off, mm -hmm. uh, it means I actually get to the end of the podcast. So I'm not going to do that just yet. Okay. Um, uh, I could write, I could make a funny video. I could write a big montage. A lot of people did that uh, for our showcase. Thankfully celebrating all the stuff that you do. Uh, I could get big and mushy and emotional, Kyle. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I will say, uh, thank you. Um, thank you for Box Peak. Thank you for the podcast. Thank you for Hall of Greats. Thank you for uh, Bets. Thank you for just having, you know, all our community can talk about how much you emotionally affected them. You know how much you emotionally affected me as a coworker. Specifically, thank you for just the, the, the great ideas that you had since you worked here and uh, you left behind a legacy of, you know, obvious, you know, talent and enthusiasm and creativity, yada, 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 but just great ideas. And so I think that's going to be one of the toughest acts to follow. Can I do thanks then? Back right, right back at you? Sure. Okay. So, Jonesy, thank you for basically, I know for sure Easy Allies wouldn't have happened without you. You know what I mean? Mm. Just the simple fact of you offering Garage at first, but then just, I feel like, I feel like you are very selfless with a lot of things. You are the person who vacuums the carpet. I'm positive no one else would vacuum that carpet. Do you, you know? You noticed. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that like... I think you are a selfless core of easy you just, allies. You just earned those boys another six months of vacuuming. Cal <laughs> <laughs> mm, noticed before he left. Last podcast, he said, it's one of the last things he ever told me on an easy ally show. I'm not sure anyone else would, vacuum. right? If you ask Huber, hey, who vacuums? I'm not sure. And I get, as the host of the podcast, to get mad at them for not noticing that I vacuum. You see, again, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, uh, when Jones said in January, when he was just like, yeah, I, I like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. He wasn't mad. Like, Jones has been probably the most supportive person about me heading out and trying to figure out what exactly I want to pursue. And so I truly appreciate that, too, Jonesy. Uh, I can't wait. I've, we got minutes yeah. left, seconds. I feel very supported by you. And that meant a lot to me at the time and still today. That means a lot to me, for sure. I love you, Kyle. We have a meeting tomorrow at Easy Allies and Blood messaged me and he was like, is Kyle's going to that meeting? And I was like, hell no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be in that meeting. <laughs> He's out. Uh, He's gone. That's it. Jones, I love you too. Curtains. Sincerely, dude. I made a lot of tough decisions since I took this position. But none of them harder than this one. You saved us but you'll kill us. I'm sorry. You're a hero. And you have to leave. Um, but, 
uh, yeah, we're 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 gamers, man. We're talking about games. It's been like been way too long since I've been getting together with Kyle Bossman to talk yeah, about games. We have a Patreon. This is very cool. Uh, if you were curious what this podcast is all about, if you haven't seen us do a podcast before, this is primarily a news-based podcast. We I like to talk about what's happened this week. I'm going to try to do that this week as much as possible. And also, I, I like to guess about things. That's one of my favorite things is to like <laughs> make predictions. And so that appears in this podcast a lot as well. Uh, we like to have fun. We like to stay on point. And let's just do it. Let's start talking about video games, yeah? Yes, okay, please. Okay, cool. 